ready to the Thursday, August 12, 2021, Town of Monroe Planning Board Workshop meeting. Uh, Noreen, would you um, please do the roll call? Anthony Vaccaro. Here. Lisa McQuaid. Here. Bonnie Franson. Here. Jason Sorinsky. Here. Jeff Manson's absent, John Allegro's absent, and Pat Shea. Here. Thank you. All right, with that, we have five members, so we have a quorum and can conduct business. I'd like to point out the fire exit. Um, there are two um, to the front of me, one on either side, one out this way, which is a main entrance into the building, and then there's another on this side out to the patio area. Uh, so with that, let's please all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Hello, Ward. Uh, so um, the applicant has requested if we could switch around a couple of items. Uh, so um, we requested to put 20 Allison Drive uh, first, if that's okay, consultants, um, board members. Then we'll make that that change. So why don't we uh, first bring up um, Kestenbaum, 20 Allison Drive, please. And just please state your names for the record. I opened your agenda and I didn't see them, so that I'm a little confused here. Joel Mann, Brachman Mann Associates. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Daniel Richmond. I'm with the law firm Zarin and Steinmetz, uh, counsel for the applicant, Congregation Habonis. Thank you. Um, do you want to make a presentation as to what's been submitted and where we are in the process? Sure. Uh, good evening again. My name is Daniel Richmond for the applicant, Congregation Habonis, and with me is Joel Mann. Uh, our uh, engineering consultant had an unexpected conflict, Larry Toro, so could not be here. Um, we're here on behalf of Congregation Habonis, which is proposing a religious school at 20 Allison Drive. Um, as I believe your board is aware, the school is in a desperate situation and currently lacks facilities for its students. In light of that, uh, we look, we have, dil our team has diligently worked to address the board's comments since the last meeting in June. We look forward to working with your board to process this application expeditiously. And we have worked with, the, in particular, to address the comments made by your board at the June meeting, including the site plan has been revised and a paved cul-de-sac is now shown, which provides sufficient route turning movements for buses, an adequate area for circulation of buses, vans, and cars. The plan also shows adequate room for four buses to stack on the site without any potential for traffic to spill over from the site onto the road. Um, the proposed parking has been adjusted to propose five parking spaces, which we submit are more than sufficient for the school's needs. Again, the only parking, as we've explained before, that would be required would be for its staff, and the proposed parking is adequate in light of the anticipated peak attendance. Some of the school's staff will arrive and depart in buses, with the remainder either carpooling or arriving in van. Accordingly, to the extent necessary, the applicant is requesting that the board modify the parking requirement which would otherwise result in an overpark project. Although we are part proposing an area for eight additional spaces um, that's identified on our plans that would be reserved for parking spaces, which in addition to the five would meet the town code's parking requirements. Ultimately, the parking would be sufficient so as not to create a nuisance or traffic hazard. Um, details of the proposed sewer connection as requested have been provided and an application was made to the sewer district today in connection with the application. Um, in response to your board's questioning regarding the landscaping, we have provided pictures from various angles of the site which show that the school will not be viewable from nearby residences. The project involves cutting approximately 11 trees, and while we submit they're not required for screening, the school would be happy to locate replacement trees in any location selected by your board. Again, we don't think they're required for screening, but if there's a particular location on the site your board would prefer, our client's happy to accommodate. 
Uh, we submit that any site disturbance would be minimal and would not cause significant adverse impacts. Disturbance is well below an acre, um, even accounting for the reserve area for parking. The school has also sought to address certain issues that, although they appear outside of your board's jurisdiction, we were willing to address, including that the school is proposed to be sprinklered uh, and the school's landings and ramp have been revised to accommodate the adequate size for ADA compliance. Um, we're looking forward to a dialogue with your board this evening on our revisions, which we think have gone substantial. We have, have met, I believe, your board's comments at the last meeting, and we're looking forward to discussing with your board a framework for advancing the project, including setting a uh, public hearing and uh, advancing the CICRA process. So we'll do that. Did you speak to the submissions that were made today? No one's had an opportunity to review them, obviously. So I just want to know, are they minor changes? Um, because we're not going to look at them. No, the submissions that was submitted today, we just added uh, to the floor plans. We actually, we submitted the floor plans like to uh, the last last planning board year already. The floor plans, there is some minor changes, internal like final touch-ups. Plus we added the four sides elevations of the building. That's actually, as explained uh, last time, the only thing that's being changed on the outside of the building is basically adding a ramp to the first floor and a ramp to the basement. That's actually, uh, the ramp to the basement is invisible, and then a second means of egress to the second floor. Uh, other than that, we're not doing any changes to the existing facade. So that's basically, we did an as-built of the building and added the additions that was submitted today. That's the first thing we probably see the outside um, uh, elevations of the building that has more to do probably with the air B. Um, and the, next and thing the site plan, um, site, site plan, plan was, was revised to make any changes as far as egress or show any changes that resulted to the floor plans that's or you didn't have to? That's act, everything, in the, uh, everything on the site plan was already submitted as a submission date. There's no new changes in the site plan either. As a result of changes in no. the layout within the Correct. floor plan. Okay. Yes. Uh, one other thing, we in the internal of the layout, we're showing a location which we got sprinkler, sprinkler plans from a sprinkler uh, design, a planner, MAP. So they proposed a 4,000 gallon tank that will be put in the location that's shown on the plan that's submitted today within the building. So there is no site plan changes required for the sprinklers. Um, another point to point out for the sprinklers, there is no uh, additional water usage or anything needed for the sprinklers. So based on the confirmation from the engineer, there's required to be a 4,000 gallon tank that will supply 30 minutes uh, supply for that building in case of a fire to supply the sprinkler heads. So it's, it's not like that you need constant um, water supply for that. It's just filling up one time and there's no additional water needed for that. Um, the other thing that was submitted today was the revised application with the correction of the congregation name that was. Yes, that was requested by your council um, that Kong a bonus technically and as Secretary of State so we have a revised a plan to um, reflect that um, for congregation a bonus and um, we have submitted all the forms updated to reflect that okay thank you um, let me start with Sean in terms of your review and this is the July plan that you reviewed yep um, so it's uh, the beginning of the letter is kind of similar to last time, just noting some of the waivers that the applicant had requested at the um, June, uh, July meeting, I guess it was, uh, regarding the f uh, four items that are requirements within the special use permit. Uh, those are the Board of Regents Charter, uh, the maintaining a frontage on a major road, uh, major collector road, uh, meeting the standards published of the uh, in the manual of planning standards for school buildings and then the screening um, uh, the applicant did provide pictures uh, which show that the building is relatively secluded the only question I had was did you sh did you have any uh, angles showing the the closest neighbors on Allison it, it didn't appear that those were included um, I you're talking about showing the direction and which neighbors are on each side. You need, you need to talk into the mic. That which neighbors are on each side based on the pictures or an aerial? The, the, two, the two adjacent neighbors on the Allison Drive side. I don't want to have it. I think we had it on one map, an aerial map before, but 
Right, so but oh, maybe some pictures. Oh, and it, I believe so, but I'm not sure. I will need to check on that. All right. Does the map show the locations from which the pictures were taken? They, no, it just no says, catalog. you know, to the northeast, to the, to the northwest. So uh, I think you need to include um, a graphic that shows the locations and the sort of where you were aiming the camera to see if it was comprehensive and in particular um, reflects that you looked at uh, visibility from the nearest homes. Um, and then in the narrative, I think you need to also address um, on and off leaf conditions because we're, ab we're obviously on leaf right now. Um, so, you know, are there deciduous trees, are there evergreens, or, you know, will this be visible? And I, I think in particular, we have to consider any changes where you're removing vegetation, um, where you're adding the cul-de-sac, where you're putting in the parking, and then any play areas as far as, you know, what will be visible from the adjoining properties. Thanks, Sean. Um, and my next item was that I did speak to Ben regarding um, the access, um, and since this will be a change in use to a a non-residential use. It's his opinion that um, the or the existing driveway and the modifications there too will need to meet the fire code, which it looks like based on the length of the driveway, it'll have to be widened to 26 feet with a uh, cul-de-sac diameter that meets that uh, appendix D of the fire code. Mm -hmm. I think right now the, the driveway width is I think the, 18 I think, feet. I think the turnaround should be um, sufficient for that, but we'll check on that. Yeah. And the uh, width, I want it's required 26 feet. I remember the number. Based 20, on the based on the length, it looks like it probably will mm -hmm. be. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there looks like there's obviously room to expand the driveway if necessary, and we will confirm that with the uh, engineer Larry Toro. Yeah. Is is there any requirement? Because I think that's one area we have to dive deep into as far as making sure there's adequate f emergency access, fire access. Right. I, I'm not sure, just based on other reviews, whether or not, do you have to have access around the building? Does Do emergency service vehicles have to be able to get around it or just show that they can... I think that's got to be looked at. I didn't get into whether or not it needed to be all the way okay. around the building. Just, just that we need to that, look at that part of the code. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. We'll check that. But I mean, in my experience, I think that has to do with the height of the building. And I don't think this building is anywhere near the height. But again, we'll confirm that. Uh, I, again, uh, I did a sort of an ADA review, or my office did an ADA review of the building, uh, the architecturals with the floor plan. Um, just some notes on that. It looked like the ramp to the lower level, which would be on the rear of the building, didn't look like it met the um, distance requirements to meet the one on 12, uh, based on the elevations that were provided. It should be that way, but I will confirm that again. Okay. And I think as you know in your memo, that's a building inspector issue, so obviously that's something that would be... Right, but it uh, affects the site plan. It affects the site plan, because if we need some more length... Okay. But I will confirm that it uh, should be sufficient. Might be that some notes are not clarified enough, but the, we did a calculation together with John Till, architect, and he should be. A, we did a uh, we did a calculation together with John Till, architect, and that, and we should have sufficient yeah. length. Yeah. Just keep in mind that the five foot square areas that's, can't change elevation. That's so. what we have. You can see it on the site plan. We specify the five foot. Right, but they can't change elevation, so right, they have to be flat, flat right? Right. Um, then just a question about how ADA access is going to be give, you know, uh, provided for the, up, the third level, the, you know, the actual second level of the dwelling. So, so there is an exemption if you have, if the floor is less than 3,000 square feet and you have the same uses on the floor below, then you, the upper level on, on that, I don't remember the section of that, you're exempt from having um, an AD accessible. Again, we were, it's not like we didn't want to do it. We were trying to get into the building and we want to have, it's in order, since this building is an existing building, adding any um, 
elevator or lift will be a very expensive and right. uh, to destroy. We'll need to redo some structural work in the building that we're trying to avoid. That means we'll need to open cut uh, some floor areas with levels, landings. So we try to go with that route, having access to the first two floors and the third floor will use that exemption. Yeah. Yeah, I just didn't know if you know if you had to add an elevator, if it would be outside the building, which would affect the site. So yeah. Uh, and then lastly, Joel, you already touched on the sprinklers. Uh, so, um, and then you said uh, you said you applied for the DPW permit for the sewer just connection. Just did a submission today. Okay. Yeah, and they should work very fast. Uh, I believe, like in a couple of weeks, I should have the permit, unless there are some major comments. And there was just a, a question I had for t uh, one of the topography lines near the cul-de-sac. Uh, that'll be, should be relatively easy for Larry to fix. Um, and then just making sure that you have the details for all the proposed improvements, like the driveway and all that. The, basically the base of it and that kind right, of Right, and then the striping and okay. all that. Yep. yep. Uh, and then... So the applicant had mentioned um, about potentially uh, reducing the amount of parking. Unfortunately, the planning board can't reduce that amount. Only the Zoning Board of Appeals can, but uh, the planning board has the ability to require um, or uh, provide for banked, thank you, uh, banked parking, which would require the uh, applicant to provide a, uh, a bond to ensure that if they're needed, they will be built. So. Um, the bulk table was missing the maximum number of, of stories, which is two and a half. Uh, that should be added. Um, water. So the, or the board had discussed last time about the additional water use. It, I didn't see an evaluation of that, um, that use. I just got a evaluation from Larry Teray. Um, basically, based on... No problem, let me just get it one second. So based on the requirements, the school is, uh, a day school is 10 gallons per day per student. The maximum, I'll, uh, we propose to have 120, I believe 120 or 125 uh, students here, but he did a calculation on the maximum occupancy of the building that's based on John Till's analysis we can this building can be occupied by 206 based on the building code so when you if you're not using the lunchroom uh, if you're using the lunchroom and all the classrooms at the same time with different students you can technically occupy the building with 206 students so he did it Larry did it the worst case scenario that's 206 occupancy times 10 that's 2060 gallons the Orange County Health Department requirement, the minimum requirement for residential well is five gallons per minute. And so we should have this sufficient. If, if you have five gallons per minute, you have like uh, 2,400 gallons. So that should be sufficient, more than sufficient than for this. Uh, and if the board wants, we can do some type of uh, like a four hour test and just to check that out to make sure well that- test. A well test. Yeah, so we had talked about at what point does this go from being a residential well to a well for a different use? And is 2,000 the threshold? I forget what it was. So, so for a for a septic. Oh, it was it's, for septic, sorry. Right, the discharge okay. is 1,000 gallons per day. Okay. Uh, they are proposing the, you know, the sewer connection, obviously. Um, I, what, I have been in contact with the Orange County Department of Health, you know, giving them the heads up that this will be coming and whether or not they can let us know if a permit's going to be necessary for the use, so. And the reason we're asking is because you've indicated you want to occupy the building right away. And I don't know that the sewer line is going to be installed. So there's a question of whether you need to change the permit for the septic system because at the 2000, I guess, level, it then... CDs permit. From yeah. T. Right, so... So again, if we limit, yes, if we still limit it for under, the, the, occupying the building right away, if we limit it to under 100 
students, we're still below the 1,000 gallons requirement. We just did everything proposed. We did the worst case scenario, but the fact of the matter, we can occupy the building now with less than 100 students if that's something that, that's yeah, going I, to comply. I think we need to be clear on what your proposal is and what the max is um, because of what gets triggered if you, because you're talking about a theoretical, so, so um, like a worst case, but is it 125 and is that what you're committed to as far as the special use permit because we don't want to see the building occupied with 125 and then suddenly there are 200 kids there. So again, Thank you. I think, um, good questions. I think it's in two different, I think there are actually two different questions in there. The one is for um, immediate use. Um, I think we'd be willing to commit to, uh, you know, keep the student body at about 100, 125, which would be below the threshold triggering it. If we're going forward and then um, discussing how we're advancing it and uh, coming to a special permit issuance, um, we'd have to, I think we'd have to talk to a client about if they'd be willing to do a student cap or if not, if they want to avail themselves of the maximum capacity. Again, uh, to, just to be clear, the, when we submitted, we proposed 125. It's not, I didn't change anything. The only I think thing if is I could, I believe you actually, have, I think it was 110. Maybe 110. Maybe so that was just a comment I had, just I to make sure whatever your narrative says, that's how, whenever this board has special permits, you you know, I think they have a project narrative that defines the scope of the Correct. activity. Everything so in the project narrative is still active. It's, I believe maybe it's 110 students with the staff, it's 125, it's something like yeah, that. Yeah, just that's to make it clear, because then the staff drives the parking, as you yeah. know, so just to make sure it's all clear, because so otherwise if that happens, then um, only reason I mentioned the, the 206, is, the 206 is based on just a code occupancy that's based on building code. It's the maximum allowed, and Larry received, had that plan. Larry Toro, when he did the calculation, had that plan. He did the water calculation based on the worst case scenario, but nothing proposed. It's, there's no proposal to have this amount of children there. So. Uh, just also add, we got a, a letter from the building inspector today, which indicated, you know, among other things, that there was no issue with the septic system. Yeah. A building inspector? Yes. Okay. For I a single family home. That? No issue with the septic system for no, a single no, family home. Just, I'm just saying there's no current issue with the septic system at the site. Yeah. Okay. Right, so so the septic, so regardless, the septic system is going to be used differently. Um, so I think somehow that has to be evaluated in some way, but it may not necessarily trigger anything from a, from a permitting Permit. perspective. Mm -hmm. And then I just want to remind you that if you're saying 110, 125, 115, whatever that number is, um, you know, the seeker is going to be based on that as well. And so we don't want to see then, you know, when it gets occupied that suddenly there's 150, 175, 200. So I think you really need to just make sure that your client knows, you know, the special use permit is going to be limited. Um, the other consideration is that if you think long term, and we don't know what long term is, that you're going to have more students, you know, I don't know to what extent it changes sizes of, you know, pipes, if it changes, you know, um, connections, you know, with the sewer, right. actual line itself. No. And so, you know, you don't want to have to install something and then have to install it again. Yeah, so that, that's, I mean, I that's, we're talking about are so you just want to make sure you're, we're uh, clear on what your max is. Sewer line is always a six inch lateral that's sufficient for t up to 2,400 gallons. Right, but I'm just giving an example of what are we studying and what is the max for, for EAF purposes yeah. and seeker. All right, and then um, regarding the trees, I think I have a typo, the number of trees that are uh, being cleared, but uh, regardless, say, you know, the, the plan will have to comply with the tree preservation code. Well, as I said in my opening remarks, uh, you're talking about the one-to-one -one replacement? Right. Like I said, when our based, our review of the pictures and of the site is they're not necessary for screening but we're willing to put you know 12 trees or 11 trees however many you know is necessary to replace um, wherever the planning board thinks would be fit um, you know we could put them around the site we can use evergreens to be sure that you know they further you know ensure that they're in their leaves off condition um, there's less vis visibility if your board's concerned about the most about the proximate neighbors on Allison we could position them that way we're open to working with your board on the location of those. Yeah, I mean, I think that it would be a combination. If, if, 
if there is potential visibility from neighbors, you know, even from seeker, we could ask for screening. I think the tree law is something different, and we would ask our conservation commission to look at, you know, what they would recommend as far as where the best plantings would be and what kind of plantings, if if that's needed, um, based on the tree law, or I should say, the tree chapter. So sticking with the clearing. Um, the applicant did add a note regarding the tree clearing because of the Indiana bat to, to meet that uh, requirement. However, he says unless a um, uh, clearing will not happen during uh, the period of March 31st, October 31st, unless a survey is conducted for potential habitat on the site, that's got to be revised to make sure that an incidental take permit is uh, received by DEC prior to. We're not going for an, IT, you know, an incidental take permit. I mean, we're doing <laughs> yeah. tree. We are not, uh, this applicant does not foresee cutting trees during the summer or spring. It will only cut trees down when an incidental take permit is not triggered. Um, if I could just go back to the tree discussion, um, if we could kind of firm up how we're coming to a resolution of what trees and where the trees should be located. Sure. Um, if we could come to an agreement, you know, now let's come to a clear path. I mean, if there are trees that need to be replaced, we, you know, we can propose them. I mean, we were trying to work with your board and right. we, solicit we, your advice. So I think we need to know the total number of trees because you, and if 12, you want to come right? up, if you want to suggest. I think, I think it's 14. Actually, there's the 12, and then there's two where you're doing the five parking spaces that weren't included. They're not X'd out, but it does look like there's two over there. So what, what the tree plan's supposed to do is you're supposed to have a, a chart saying, listing the trees, you're, I'm going to be removing, identifying them by the type, the size, and all of that, and they're supposed to be replaced. However many you're re removing, you have to replace them, or there's an option you could ask, I think, to do a fee instead. But I believe the board sounds like you would want the trees to be replaced, and they would want the Monroe, they would want the Monroe Conservation Commission to weigh in as far as what types of trees and where they would be most appropriate for the site. It, it's comparable to what we did for, and Joel would know this project, the Raywood Drive project where we have them go out and then they recommend w how the trees could best be placed from a, you know, both a habitat perspective and a, and, a, and a visual perspective. Okay, is that a referral that could be made this evening so we can, you know, get the conservation board out there? I, I, I think we need to have the total number of trees and do you have a proposal first of what you would envision doing so they can react to that and then make recommendations? Again, I think we were open to working. I know we were, it was a blank slate, but if you'd like us to propose locations, but I would suggest if we could get the conservation board out there uh, and have a discussion with them, again, you know, we're very amenable to working with them about where the trees could be located. So um, we will ask our um, Monroe Conservation Commission, make sure, do they have a plan set at this point? Probably not, but I have enough. Okay, so do they have the most recent? I don't think we've given them this one yet. Um, but I mean, in other words, you have an extra copy from the what, Joel? An extra copy from tonight. Okay. So once we get that, we'll forward it to the Conservation Commission so they can go out and walk the site. I have enough downstairs. You have enough downstairs? Okay. Not all cold chest in the morning. Okay. Who do they, if they need to go out with someone, who do they, uh, and I think we'd want to get um, Karen. Karen to help out. Uh, who do we contact to get on the site? She'll contact me. Contact you? Me okay. In my office, yeah. Okay. I think I, I was in contact with the board the last time. Okay. Uh, I don't remember. With Raywood? With Raywood, yes. Okay. So, just so we get that going so they get the plans and then they can organize to get out there and have Karen okay. with them. Karen's our landscape architect. She KRF? No, no. Oh. She's uh, Karen Arndt. She's from Orange County. And last time the board had asked if there was going to be any lighting proposed. We're not proposing any lighting. There is existing lighting along the right. roadway. There is some of the building. Since the building is not being used at night times, and so we were not anticipated to propose any lighting. If there will be anything required going forward, we'll let the board know. But they, they were already there, and they see they don't need it. Is there, but is there any lighting that's required from a code perspective? No. I, I don't know. The, I'm asking the question, no. yeah. I will check on that, but okay. uh, it shouldn't be. Yeah, just check, because if they're coming and they're leaving, 
you know, if they're being, I guess if they're going on the bus, then it's really any pathway to get to the bus. But other than that, I don't there is, know. There is some existing lighting. On that yeah, so. I, I just don't know if there's a standard that has to be met Again, for lighting. To emphasize, it's a school for young girls. I mean, they're not going to be there, I think. No, but I, when it gets dusk in the winter around 5 o'clock, if they are leaving the school at a certain time, it's possible that it will be dark. That's why. As a five. Okay. Okay. Um, and then lastly, Secra, I, the board previously circulated for lead agency, so we should just confirm with Ashley if there's any additional steps. And then one more thing, I did stop out this evening. I happened to, I just drove by, you know, the, the entrance, and it looked like there was a fence up that's not identified on the plans. I, uh, I'm assuming that's a new addition, or? Might be. They put a fence for a couple weeks there. A couple of weeks ago. Okay. Yeah, I, I actually had been out there originally. There was not there was not a fence there, and yeah. then I had been out more recently, and there was a fence. Yes. And so, we need to remind them not to really be doing work there while we're under seeker. So we'll and we need to show it now on the plan. We'll add the fence to the plan. And if you could add a detail, because I don't even know what height, what's what. They actually do have one for the playground, but if it's going to be the same height, you know, or a different height, you should have a different detail. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Ashley? So as far as secret goes, as Sean mentioned, you had declared your intent to be lead agency. You authorized the circulation of the notice of intent upon receipt of the revised EIF. So we got that with the last submission. I made the uh, circulation on the 9th of August, I believe. So you can't declare or assume lead agency status tonight, but you'd be able to at your next meeting, assuming no objections. That would be when the 30 days has passed. Um, just one of the things we talked about last time was the food prep area, and that's still, I believe, identified on the floor plans. I know there's a note added to the site plan saying that there's no food preparation, but if there's still going to be a room in the floor plans called a food prep room, if you could maybe just elaborate on what's going to be, be there just in writing to put it in the narrative, just make it clear, because you, you have something still labeled food prep. I mean, we, we have a note saying there's no food prep. You have a, a room called food prep, so it just... We, we explained, I think it's explained in the narrative. I'll look on the language, we'll explain it a little bit more. I think it is explained in the, in the narrative. Again, there's no uh, cooking or like what, what we mean. The question was the food preparation. If there is dishes being washed there that's affecting that kind of stuff. But there's definitely, we have ready food coming in. And it's being if it's just like a staging area or something like that. Yeah, so yes, that, if you could just make sure that's clear in the writing, uh, that's all. Disposable items. And yeah, just to make it clear in the writing, that's all. Okay. Um, Can I just oh. go back to Sucre, actually? Sure. So I, I understand you're saying that you circulated intent, and I guess it was, it, it was circulated on August 9th? Yes. Okay. Monday. I'll turn I, the mic towards him, please. So lead agency was just circulated August 9th? Okay. Uh, I, yes, well, we just, got, we just got the EAF on the 29th. Okay. Um, so then I guess at the next meeting, the board would that be That would be the position. earliest. I believe that would be 30 days, if no objections. Okay, and then the board, so then at the next meeting, could make, be in a position to make a determination of significance? I don't think, I mean, I, that's not really a question for me. It's more for the board. I don't know if there's anything else they want from you in order to be able to make such a determination. For example, the, the water information you went over tonight, that obviously has to be submitted, the well testing, um, if there's a well testing that's going to be required. But that's going to have to be, obviously, whatever's needed in order to make the determination of significance would have to be submitted before that time. Well, so could we make it, if we have a discussion about what would be required to make a determination of significance? I, I can't imagine by the next meeting issuing an, uh, if, so if you're talking about a negative declaration, I can't imagine doing a neg deck. So, so are there particular know. issues? I mean, wh on what well, base? Well, I think we're still evaluating that. We haven't heard yet back from the um, DEC or from any of the other agency. Well, I shouldn't say DEC. Whoever we submitted and circulated the notice of intent to. So we need to hear from them. I think there's information we want to know. Um, I want to know from the fire district whether there's any issues with being able to access the site and to properly serve it. 
Um, we want to get the water cleared up. We want to make sure sewer isn't an issue. Um, so I just think there's enough out there that I, uh, speaking for myself as one member, would not be prepared to make a determination of significance. I just think there's more information that we need. Well, that's what I'm saying, so we could identify it. So again, so you're saying, I mean, I, I'm not sure the fire district's necessarily a secret issue, but you want to refer to, I guess, the fire inspector, or is that what? Well, fire and the department. fire district who ultimately is going to access the site in the okay. event of an emergency. So if they were to review the plans, would they say it's not good to have these parking spaces here or this isn't a big enough cul-de-sac for a turnaround area or we can do it adequately? You know, from me, from my perspective, that is part of Seeker. Um, okay, so has that referral or submission been made yet? to the no, fire we, inspector, we, is that something we should make? You're just submitting new plans today. No, no, I understand, <laughs> I'm not saying if it has been made. Uh, we, have to, we have to get these plans in enough That's order fine. to then be able to circulate to others who are going to review it. Now we did do our seeker circulation, so I and think fire, district fire district's included. Yeah. So they are getting the plans, because okay. we submitted it. It's but forwarded. I think, and as we, and Dan, if you could maybe just let us go through and I could give my comments to the board and then the board could talk about what other issues they think there are for seeker that way you know what else they're looking for but i think to try and box them in right now i'm not trying to the, box anyone in, in. i just think just be, i think hard. it would be helpful to everyone here if no of just... course it, it would be but i think that's what we're kind of doing right now is we're going through and seeing what issues there are and then what is going to be needed okay. so if we could just continue going through that and then you know if there's specific questions we could we could talk about them um, I know the, the water, for example, the well information that you gave, that obviously has to be submitted, what you were talking about tonight. I don't know whether that's something your office or what Frank can you do. Another thing we had talked about was the sewer and this issue where in, in the town of Monroe, the county has made these comments about out of district users and sewer capacity issues. You're in Orange County Sewer District number one, but the county's also made similar comments. So I've reached out to them just to see if that was by error or why they made those comments. Um, just moving along. You talked a little bit about the, the outside play area and the fence, so that- Ashley, real quick. So do you understand the issue with the Orange County Sewer District? I did not, I didn't want, I didn't want to interrupt though. I wanted to okay. let her finish her comments and then I was gonna go through them, but- Yeah, I, well, I, there's I, so, no, if there's something you have a question with, then you could, you know, you could <laughs> definitely raise it then. Um, we had talked about this at the last meeting. The county had, has said in Monroe, there's a, um, under the Muna Basin sewer agreement, out of district users, meaning properties that are outside of Orange County Sewer District number one, they cannot, projects cannot be approved unless they address these sewer capacity issues. Um, so, that, so they have an allocation of, let's say, 100,000 gallons per day, and currently they're over that capacity? But we're in the district. So right. But, but I'm saying, so recently we received comments from the county on in-district projects also and referring to this issue. So I just wanted, that's why I wanted to just make you aware. And I've reached out to say, I think, I don't know if this is why this is, because they are in the district, but that's just something I'm putting on, on your I know the, I know the, what they're working on, and I know the whole capacity issue, and this shouldn't be, based on my information, shouldn't be any problem with this project here. Well, I think we've circulated to them for lead agency, or for lead agency, right, as, so, you know, they may give us today, even clarification through that process. Right. Too. And hmm? we also submitted to them today, too. Okay. Right. What did you submit to them for? Just submitted today. For the line? connection. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I was just raising <coughs> as a potential seeker issue. Um, uh, if you submit the application, could you provide a copy to our engineer, please? Sure. Thank you. As far as the, um, I think you talked a little bit about the fencing. So the board has architectural review over any new structures. So I think it's the fencing, the, the play area. I think there was some signage noted on the plan and a dumpster enclosure. I saw you had some details. That's something the board has to review under your architectural. Um, we talked about the trees already. There's some specific map notes for the tree preservation law, and I could give you the language for those. It's Joel probably has them from a prior application. You could adapt them, but it's just the town has this tree preservation law that requires you to maintain all the, the trees and things like that. Um, the number of trees, again, has to be the one-to-one -one basis. Sounds like you'll be speaking with the Conservation Commission about that. As far as the waivers, I know you talked about the landscaping and the screening. Are you actually seeking waivers from those, or are you saying that the existing landscaping complies? 
uh, we think the existing landscaping complies, you know, again, we're willing to work with you, the conservation board, again, if you think some other trees are necessary. I don't know if the board has done a site visit or plans a site visit or something like that. I mean, again. We, we will, I, I think it would be useful. So where I see, um, well, first of all, we need to make sure that this is the full extent of improvements, which we don't know. So for instance, if for any reason you have to go to 26 feet, that might mean additional paving, that might mean additional grading. So to get at where we might need landscaping, we need to know, again, sort of what the full extent of the improvements are, and that speaks to this fire code question. So um, right now I'm seeing, as an example by Daniel, you know, to be able to accommodate those proposed spaces while you might want to land bank it, um, you're actually land banking the uphill um, spaces as opposed to the downhill spaces. So to be able to accommodate those spaces, you're grading into um, a tree line, and I don't know what's on the Daniel property if they have, you know, themselves screening on their property or not. Um, also down by where the clearing limits are, um, that's also Daniel, but it's 7-3-4. Um, you know, you're showing clearing limits along one of the property lines, and again, I'd want to understand what potentially you're opening up there as far as uh, views, and whether in fact that clearing limit um, maybe should be shifted a bit, but I don't know, because we'd have to look at that. I think the other thing is that you're showing clearing limits um, and you're referring to them as clearing limits from a tree perspective, but the bottom line is you're, you're gonna be disturbing to be able to put that entire line in. And I didn't know if the limits of disturbance actually consider whatever the width of um, land is in all likelihood to be graded and disturbed to install the sewer line in. I did a calculation. calculation which includes so I know that, so my question is, does it include the clearing, what's within the clearing limits and all the way up the sanitary sewer connection or just the clearing part? I believe it includes the entire sewer. It, it says sewer, sewer easement, line? but I, I take it as an entire sewer line, yeah. Okay, if you could um, verify that, Joel, and also that the disturbance includes all the grading in and around the cul-de-sac and the parking lots. Okay. Um, I mean, I think it's already shown in the plans, yeah, isn't it? That's my discussion with Larry. Everything is included and should be included in the disturbance area. Okay. Well, and so the reason I ask is because no, no, normally you put limits of disturbance. You have some kind of grading sheet. It shows the limits of disturbance. They're showing graded topo lines, but not actually sort of the limits and then usually you put a calculation by what that area is. So that's why I'm asking for it to be clarified. So you can see there is topos on the plan. Right, but normally you have a limits of All disturbance limits, so line, yeah. Line? It, yeah. Around that, that's there. A, Adam, that's right. a requirement of a SWIP, so that, yeah. That, yeah, yeah along, that's where you're used to seeing it. But yeah, so along the sanitary sewer, just to confirm that you're under the acre can, threshold. Basically, we'll, do, we'll tell them to do uh, the actual line. Of yeah. The limit of disturbance, no problem. Right, so then we'll know what, that if it's under the, the acre, if it's triggering the, the simple SWIP. Sorry, Ashley. I think that was pretty much it. I was just, yeah, if, if you need the waiver, if you don't, if you have the, whatever the width is for the landscaping, because I see you note some trees on, or some tree lines, I think, on the plans. I know you provided the pictures, but just mm -hmm. if you're asking for the waiver, I just no, want it to be uh, clear, yeah, because otherwise, the, the you know, if, if you're asking for the waiver, or do you have enough already that you meet the code? It's just, I just was asking for some clarity there. So basically, you want us to verify that might be that we need, we, we meet the code anyway. That's basically, we didn't evaluate if we meet the code or not. So what we pointed out, that we are, believe that we are, have enough screening either way if we meet. If so the way that the special use permit standards work, you have to meet all of them or ask for a waiver, right? So if there's a specific standard then that applies to the waiver, I just want it to be clear if you're asking for the waiver or if you meet it, it's one or the other, it's just, the planning so, board will need to waive whatever you're asking, you know, whatever, or consider whatever waivers you, you need. So I want that everyone to be on the same page there. If we don't, 
A, do we have to waive it? And B, if we don't waive it, does that trigger a variant situation? Are we just talking about R8, Ashley, where all parking must be... Seven, be and eight, seven and eight. Shall be and I'm saying you, you might very well meet that, just then make a note on the plan, because it's ultimately the plan that would be for this property on the file. The plan is what gets approved, so if you meet it, then that's, that's fine. Um, or if you need the waiver, then just. It's to be Evergreen and not less than 25 feet. Okay. Right. We'll look it up. That's as far as the, the waiver standard there, it is so trying to oh. get you the exact so language. So any, any waiver may be mm -hmm. exercised in the event that any such requirements are found not to be required in the interest of the public health, safety, or general welfare, or inappropriate to a particular or special use permit. So on that basis, then we would decide whether to waive or not, and, and whether we can do, waive or not, and then whether that in any way triggers a variance. OK, thank you. If it's a yeah, if it's a waive, right. it doesn't. But if it if it wasn't, um, or if something like the parking that you were going to seek an actual reduction, that would be a, a variance. Um, yeah, I believe that is it. I mean, we did speak again about the project narrative, just to make sure whatever whatever you're asking for is just in there, because um, that defines the scope and the parking and all of that. I mean, I think again, it, the only question on the narrative. Sorry. The only question on the narrative, I think mm -hmm. you're, you know, just confirmation of student population. You want us to confirm with our client that he understands that this would potentially be a cap on a special use permit is what I'm understanding. I mean, again. Yes, whatever, whatever number um, of students and of staff, too, because the staff is what defines the parking. Okay. And the, the food prep, if you just evaluate or just elaborate on what is going on in the room that's called the food preparation room, that it's not actual preparation. What, then whatever it is, plating food on disposable dishes, whatever's going on there. Okay. So just, so just a narrative on those two points. Okay. Okay. So um, I'll turn to my planning board members. Jason, do you have any comments? Uh, no, I'm good. I just thank you for beginning to fix the bus in the situation. I appreciate that. Yeah. Matt, do you have anything? I have no questions. I have a few questions. Um, the widening of the driveway, it's next to the existing pavement. Do we know the condition of that existing driveway? And if you build, the, widen the driveway, uh, is that going to match the existing construction of the driveway or um, is it going to be to new specs? So it will basically be additional paving if there's a need for, uh, I was there in the property, probably a need for um, do some maintenance on the existing, we'll fill it in at the same time and it will be completed. Would that condition say it's not suitable for the proposed bus traffic? Uh, is there some follow-up that, that would be repaved or assurance that that would be maintained? Not sure what the question is. The question is: Is the pavement there sufficient to support the proposed development? Oh, so what are you proposing to do? Question. The question is basically: This was now for residential traffic, and now we're going to have bus traffic. But usually, the compaction under any driveway is being done the same way. It's not a roadway that we shall have the roadway loading requirements for heavy vehicles, but typically, bus and cars can go the typical driveways, and. If there will be a need to maintain that, it's definitely regular. I think that type of properties usually have one y yearly inspections by the building inspector, and when you see something safety, health and safety issues, he's requiring to fix that, so. Okay, so the busing, uh, proposed busing may include large buses? Yeah, we propose that, the regular size buses. Could you or mark out, I mean, does the existing pavement is it the way it's shown and in the near the building? Does it flare out like that? And the island, is that existing or is that proposed? This was proposed. Uh, this was the turn around is proposed. Turn around is a new proposal. Oh, you I see. see. It looked like an island, but you're saying that that's a contour. The, no, uh, the island, no, the island is the, actually an island. That's your question? I yeah, yeah. 
There is actually an island there, but it will be removed. Is, oh, okay. is the bus... Okay. Um, it's a small grass piece in the middle, probably done for nice or whatever design, but it will need to be removed. Is, is the, just quick, related to the bus, Anthony, is the bus template that's shown the largest bus? Um, no, it's not. Okay. So if you're saying the largest bus can go on, then a different template has to be used. And there's no template on that cul-de-sac, but I didn't bring that there issue is, up. She too. No, I meant on the site plan. There's a detail of it, but it's not shown on the site plan to show that it conforms with this cul-de-sac, but I didn't bring that issue up since you're going to have to widen the, or potentially widen the cul-de-sac anyway to meet the fire code. To meet the fire code. Okay. Right. So there needs to be a sheet that actually shows the turning radius of the bus that it can get around. It shows a sheet too on the site plan. But no, that's, right, that's just a turning diagram. That's right. not showing yeah, it on the cul-de-sac. It's not showing on the cul-de-sac that it meets that, kind, that radius. So we'll match that together. But normally you actually show, show. it on the cul-de-sac. Right. Okay. Okay. It's that's the same as like when we do warehouses and trucks. You need to show it on the pavement in the cul-de-sac. Thank you. Yeah, so I was just wondering, just for the sake of easy reading, can you identify what the limits of the existing pavement are and what the proposed area, I mean, is this how it's going to show on the final plan as a shaded area? That it's, and then the existing pavement is delineated by the line next to it? Basically, you can see the, there's the note pavement. It's surrounded by two lines from both sides, starting from the beginning of the property. There is like the white area between the two lines where it says pavement that's existing and then the okay. shaded area next to it that's the uh, proposed pavement extension. Okay, the maybe the word existing in front of the pavement would help. We shall add an, okay. And then the other thing about the pavers that go to the side of the building, are those existing or are those proposed? Um, there is an existing walkway to the building. I think that's part of the original, but we'll check on that. I'm assuming LP is standard for light post. Yes. And the site signage, do we have a detail on that? Is that an existing site signage or proposed? Um, I, will tell you, I will need to check on that. It seems like it's proposed, but it seems yeah, there, like there is isn't signage there now. There is a signage no. there now, then it's no. probably proposed. Well, there shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it is, but uh, they, they wasn't sure, not, I believe I told them to propose one, so we're not getting it the problem. We need to come back again for signage. So okay. Yeah, so he should put a detail on then. We'll put a sign detail. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm assuming the LP is proposed light post, light post, or is that existing? Yeah. Uh, that's that's existing. I mean, if we had a legend, that could help. Yeah, he needs a comprehensive legend of what's shown on this plan. And just, I'm just trying to get orientated to the site, but where's the well located? What? What is the question? Well. There it is. Thank you. All right, so that's an existing well. And then the other thing I didn't understand, Sean, maybe you can educate me. Uh, what is the bank parking all about? How does that work? So they have the eight spaces proposed as, um, you know, if required. So their intent would be that they show those spaces that they could be built there. Then um, they don't actually construct them until such time that they're needed, likely by Ben saying, okay, you've got cars parked out on Allison Drive. You got to, you know, provide parking spaces. The applicant would provide a bond in the amount to be able to construct those to the town, that they hold that for up to three years. Um, and if, if they're needed, the bond would be there to, you know, be a performance security that they'll actually construct the, the parking spaces. Okay, thank you. Lisa, do you have any comments? I think that the lighting is important. I know um, we've just been finding out the uh, people know that's ours matter of on uh, better to have now find out that 
That was my only comment. Um, I think I, I made a note for, my, for myself to check on that, but there, as noted before, there is actually light poles on the way on the driveway. There is lighting on the building. I will check to make sure that it is sufficient, and if we need to add, I will let you know. So in terms of my comments, um, we have to discuss um, as we move forward in seeker well testing, and you know, if you would just, we're, we're going forth under the premise that you're going to do, you're going to have 100 or so students, but let us know between now and the next meeting, whether you are considering more than that from a seeker perspective. Sure. We'll confirm that. I understand for the narrative that we're not so, doing that. And um, for well, so for well test, so well for well testing, can we do? It? Can we schedule? Can we do a well testing? Do you want a, anyone to witness that? Well, or we normally just have. Need a um, I, I don't think we're talking from a big commercial project here. That <laughs> so. So why don't we'll reach out to Frank? We'll have Sean uh, contact Frank um, Geshard. Frank Getchell. Getchell. and uh, he's with Weston Sampson, and he's been doing the the well testing reviews. So let's get a set of plans that the most most recent um, to him, and so just I guess Sean, you could send digital versions of it over to him, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And yep. so you can talk to him. And then let's get a memo from Frank as far as what do you think the testing protocol should be. Um, and just on the map, if the well's a permanent fixture, it shouldn't be shaded. It should be, you know, it, it should stand out, the well. Either call it out or show it better. Well, okay, we can clarify the well, but I mean, I think it, it, it's a... Into the mic. <laughs> Going from downstairs. I'm just trying to see if we can streamline things here. I think first, I think the w the well, if you want that clarified on a plan, if that's your question, we can do that. Um, I think rather than going back and forth with the hydrogeologist consultant you're using about what the protocol is, I mean, I think it's fairly standard for this size of use. I mean, it's like a four-hour test. I mean, but I don't want to do a four-hour test and then find out that Frank said, "Well, you should have done it X, Y, Z." I'm not the expert. Or but, is. But, but again, rather than going back and forth, it sounds like a phone call. I mean, but but that Sean's going to handle that. So, and then once Sean speaks to him, you know, either it is a simple four-hour test, and he can let us know with whatever water quality testing is needed, or or, or it's down more tests on other wells, or okay. yeah, or potentially draw down tests on other wells, or you know, whatever he thinks. And you show the um, the sprinkler yes. tank, okay. Yes. All right, because I don't think that really matters. I think you just fill it up, and it's not like a big Once pumping we drain. Need, we have a tank. It doesn't have to do nothing with the well. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. So on the well, again, I just want to close the conversation. So yes. on the Frank, uh, Sean will reach out to Frank. And Frank will either... His feedback on whether a full elaborate test should have to happen, is. you know. Or yeah, he'll understand the nature of the use. And mm -hmm. okay. Right. It's just more from the use perspective since we're going from but residential if, to But if you could just clarify what the total number of gallons per day is intended to be used. I will get you the clarification by tomorrow. Okay. So uh, okay. if there is any a need for any, if you need 10 set of plans for other 10 consultants here, I can supply <laughs> you with that. PDFs no work well, too. No problem. So Frank, Karen. Yep. Uh, I think those are the only other two we're talking about. Um, Fire district got a copy of the, you know, as part of the so circulation. Can we, can we schedule a meeting? I think uh, on other projects I had it in the village of Monroe. So we had a meeting with the fire chief, with the, I think it's John Sherney now, with Mambasha fire chief. I don't know if that's what you want to do to get clarifying. We have a meeting with the plants and basically hand out the comments right away if you had some, some wishes that you want to do. Otherwise. Yeah. Otherwise, he couldn't. You're not getting. I don't think you will get a response back. The best, the most efficient way was basically a meeting together. I don't disagree, but I think let's um, let's reach Sean if you could find out who normally we speak to with the fire district. Sure. And then Sean, if you could be present for that meeting. Absolutely. Yeah, we had a meeting at the other site. Was the town the. It was in Village of Monroe, the Village of Yeah, here it Arlington would be in, in the town. And whatever if we... Okay. So Noreen has to prepare minutes. Yes. And, and it's very difficult for her to do it. <laughs> I will 
liquid. Do- I will donate a second so mic. So they're all going to say tonight I will donate a second on the mic. mic for the hair. For they're the all, the all going to be on the mic. Yes. <laughs> That's all it's going to say. Is, is there um, an example school or nearby school that is around the same capacity that we could check out as far as typical parking, typical coming and going? What, what's um, the nearest girl school? No, not really. So I don't know if you want to get in a lengthy discussion about it, but it's different than the other three main schools that are here, here in the village and some are having actually the Glenwood School that's ba- basically affiliated with the more bigger congregations. This is basically more like a private and trying to keep a smaller school. There is a lot of that, this type of schools more in Rockland. Okay. It's the first time coming up in this area. Okay. The need for that, since the area grows bigger, there's some different, uh, how to explain, the religious needs for different children. So basically, I don't think there's any comparison here. Is there the one area. in Rockland? There's probably a, much of, a lot of them in Rockland, but... Can you think, could you throw out a couple or send an email to Noreen with a couple that you could think of? I will need to do the research. I'm not so familiar, but I know in concept there is. uh, So so what makes this different than like the Glenwood School? It's basically a much smaller capacity. Is it because it's a smaller congregation? It's not. Or it's it's like the equivalent of going to, you know, instead of going to public school, you're going to an exclusive private school. It's something like that. People want to be more in a small private school okay. because of different needs. Okay. But when you say different needs, you're not talking special needs. No, not special needs, but okay. it's like religious. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, but not special needs as in... No, not... not no, no, it's, 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 he's talking about the specific requirements not of the, the religious... Specific requirements of the religious practices yeah. of this congregation. Okay. Okay. Um, two and a half stories. We did change the zoning code. I don't know if we changed what two and a half stories constitutes. So we just need to check up if that hasn't we're happened not, yet. We're not it may be. The height. No, I know it may be a pre-existing condition, but then we should note it on but, the bulk well, table. But it also could affect if the bottom floor can be habitable. I don't, I don't know that we changed story think, definition, I but I think we, we just need to check it. I think we can have it habitable, but uh, we can't, whatever, it can be more, I can't expose it more, but I'm not exposing it anymore. So it's, uh, if it's existing, then it's, the half story used to be actually the Eric. This is technically probably by building codes, probably a two story building. It may be so. I just want to right. check the definitions as far as story. Yeah, the two and a half story was used to be uh, like when you have an Eric and a turret, I believe a turret of the, of the footprint of the building. But it, it Eric could, used that, he, that was the half story. It can also be a yeah, half story. But the basement is never, uh, was never under the condition as a half story. It's basically, it's, there is some guy, whatever, we can check her out in the code. Um, I will say my one concern is having one access in for the school, because typically schools have two accesses, one to get in and out, the other one for emergency ingress and egress. So it is proposed there. And there is existing on the first floor, there is already two accesses. No, I'm talking about access into the site, traffic access into the site. There's no, I I don't think there's any requirements. So um, in terms of waivers, I think that there's waivers being asked, but I don't think there's been an evaluation from the perspective of why, what are in those, so for instance, the school standards. There's a requirement with the private schools that it meet a certain um, standards of New York State Department of Education. And that was for both public and private schools with the intent of even having private schools be subject to certain standards. You're asking for a waiver from that, but have you actually looked at the standards to see whether you need a waiver, is my question. And so I'd like more narrative as to how you having looked at those standards and say, you know, why you think a standard or a waiver would be appropriate, particularly for that um, special use permit item. Because well, you, you mentioned the Board of Regents, you explained the waiver to that. 
but I don't feel like the waiver for the standards for schools has been really addressed by actually looking at what the standards are and saying, you might even meet it for all you know. We, we did it. Um, we did it, we had a, uh, we can, we can have John Tiller at the meeting, but he did uh, a review on that, and there's a, a list of much different requirements that it's, um, it's more like, uh, might be a, a, a lack of, I don't know how to explain it, but there, there is two provisions, there is two issues. Number one is the, the planning and to go through all the requirements by itself. When you go, you, you need to, to have a special school planner for that, special school consultant, that's a lot of uh, very expensive and very long term. And we're number not, one, we're number not two, asking. Number two, it's almost impossible to meet all the requirements with an existing building, and even a proposed building will be different. That's basically meant to, it's not in the building code. So yeah, we're again, not asking for you to necessarily get a special person to prepare it. It's more looking at the standards themselves. Like, does it say you have to have one bathroom per 50 kids? You know, do you have that's, to? That's all in building code. There is some different requirements that's there. If we, I can have at the next meeting, John, to, to explain it a little bit more. But again, but, yeah, or, or a memo to explain it, either or. He, I don't know that he has to necessarily be here, but you're asking for a waiver from standards that I don't feel like have been evaluated to be able to ask for the waiver. Well, I mean, we'll look into this, but... I, thank you, no worries, sorry. We'll, we'll certainly look into this, but again, I just got to bring us back. This is, you know, it's a religious educational school entitled to all the benefits under New York State law. Um, the board should be focusing on the public health, safety, and welfare issues because yeah. that's essentially its jurisdiction. I think if the state has already declared that the state building code is what's regulated, what regulates private schools, and we're conforming to the state building code, um, I would submit, you know, that you know there, there shouldn't really be much discussion beyond that. I mean, there may be things beyond that that are interesting, you know, but, but I, I don't know that based on those standards, they're not higher you know, safety, health, welfare standards, and that are unique to schools themselves. So that's why I think a better evaluation instead of just asking for the waiver but would be useful as an example of this is why it doesn't apply or, you know, these standards are even more stringent in the building code. But I'm more saying the of state an has already made that determination. The state has already determined that the state building code is what applies to private schools such as this. For the town special use permit criteria, the does require the uh, to adhere to those standards. So that's why I think the question is whether if, if there's things you do comply, then to you know say which of those standards you meet, or if why they're not required, or why it's not um, necessary in the public health, welfare, safety issues, well, think, well, well, or that the well, building well, or well. that the building code is more stringent. There's, there's been no evaluation or no discussion of the standards themselves. So I, I would like more of that. I would like to know that before I waive it. Well, but again, I'm saying, I mean, I think it's really a legal issue. I think the state has determined that the state building code is what applies to private schools, not this manual of standards. So uh, I respectfully- but that's, but that's our standard. That's our special use permit standard. And that standard may respectfully go beyond what a board is allowed to do with respect to a religious and educational use. Well, it's I could not ask something that this board, though, this board can't override the code, so that's not something, you know, this board has to apply the code as it's written, so it can't, that, that's what it's telling them to do, that's what it's trying to do here. I think to, to, I think to point out, the, the based on the discussion we had with John Till, <laughs> even to answer your question, can be weeks of work, basically, to go through all the standards to see the differences. There is, a, there is everything was written a different, and there's different requirements, and it's very ex, uh, time consuming to go through and follow that regulations. But I will have John here and tell him to prepare a little bit more for the next meeting to explain that. I think it'd be useful. As I said, either a memo or if he wants to come in and explain yes. the standards to us, you know, so that we can, if we need to, waive them. Because you're asking for the waiver, so we have to evaluate that request. And, and so it's important for us to understand what we're waiving. Fair enough, but again, I mean, as I 
said before, and I don't think it needs to repeat it. I think it ultimately is a legal issue, but Mr. Till will appear at the next meeting and address your question. If he's already done the work like Joel said he did, is it that hard to provide it in writing? He didn't do it. He basically told us that to get, we asked him the question before On we the did mic. it. We asked him the we asked him the question before we did it, before we went to the waiver. He he told us right away before even getting into the details. I'm telling you, this is a long, long term thing that it doesn't make any sense and shouldn't apply to the religious schools. That's it's not me to there. There is building New York State building code is safe enough for private schools that we shouldn't go by. The, we shouldn't have an issue going being bounded by that. So, well, those, and that's standards for all schools, whether they're public or private, at least in the Monroe Code. So uh, that's, I'm just saying that is what was a special use permit standard. I've, I've commented that when the zoning was done at that time, that this is an issue. I'm so, I can't, I didn't hear you. I've made a public comment when the zoning was drafted that this is going to be an issue. I don't remember that. You may have, I don't remember that. It's on record to have the documents. So, I mean, we're here now, and it was passed, and it's there, and so we need to evaluate it. Well, I mean, you can evaluate it, but again, you got the state building. You know, New York State has decided that the state, New York State, has determined that the state building code is what applies to private schools and religious schools, um, and that's sufficient for the public health, safety, and welfare. And again, respectfully, this board's. Jurisdiction under the case law is coterminous with the public health, safety, and welfare. And the state has already made a determination. I mean, it's similar to the discussion of, you know, taxes. Religious schools don't pay taxes, but, this, you know, the courts have long ago decided that, I mean, it may be something that people may be interested in inquiring. Well, what's the effect of a, allowing a religious or educational use if they're not going to pay taxes? And the courts have said that's already a determination that's been made. Um, I'll ask um, Ashley if you could follow up on that. Right, I was just referring to your narrative, and you do say that um, it's the focus is on public school, that it, you said the courts say that they don't apply to public schools, but is there something specific? Do they break down then the subsets of private schools, or it's just anything non-public they're saying it shouldn't apply to? Because I'm not sure what your question is, Ashley. So you're saying in your, in your memorandum or your... your letter there that the manual is only intended to apply for public school buildings but again the town of monroe code says it's to apply to private school so i'm just wondering if there's additional cases that you were just referring to when you just spoke now or if you're just referring to what's in here speaking about non-public i think the policy is that the town of monroe wanted private schools to adhere to the same standards that a public school would be and that the public school standards were established by new york state department of education and so that, that was the intent. So if there's a waiver, again, I think we need more of a, a discussion of the waiver as opposed to, you know, what has been provided so far. Yeah. Actually, I would just refer you to footnote four of the same letter. I think that's a case in that progeny which talks about the limitations on um, boards with respect to determinations that have already been made by the state as a policy, statewide policy matter. All right. So I think for now we've, we've circulated for lead agency. We're going to reach out to Karen. We're going to reach out to Frank. We're going to continue to review the plans. Our we district. have to wait to hear for um, or from um, any of the agencies through the circulation process, coordinate with the Conservation Commission. We, uh, we need to schedule a site walk. Um, so we should, Noreen, maybe send around an email tomorrow, see what everybody's availability is. On Monday, okay, on Monday. I understand you're closed tomorrow. Can we just, I, I know I, I tried doing this before and I was cut off, if we could just go for, so we're all on the same page about what we need to do to move this forward. I think it would be helpful for everyone here. That's what I was just doing, sort yeah. of the laundry list. Right. All right. Could we just go through it one by one just so I understand? So you said, I think. So, num so Karen Arndt will be sent the plans. She's our landscape architect. Mm -hmm. The plans will be sent to Frank so he but can. Just on, on Karen Arndt, you're also going to meet with the um, Monroe Conservation Commission as well as Karen uh, to make sure that 
uh, whatever you're proposing screening wise and replace tree, uh, replacement tree wise is well, that's acceptable to both of them that's what i'm trying to say so you're going to make the referral to karen do we reach out to the conservation board or do you oh, we do okay yep put it in their mail great yes and now we can expect to hear from them about when they want to visit the site. i don't know when their next meeting is ward when's your next meeting Two weeks from now? Okay. So, I mean, if it fits on their agenda, I don't know what's on their agenda, what they're working on, but if they can get it on, they will. Can we do a walkthrough before that yeah, meeting? Do, do we, we want to do the walkthrough before the meeting, the site? Well, Out to uh, Joe on when you do the walkthrough, I'd like Karen to be there. So we just need to coordinate Karen and, because I know you like to have the consultants there. I'll add them to the And right. So Noreen can start the process of um, setting something up to get Karen, the Conservation Commission, and any planning board members that might want to go out there at the same time. So then Frank, um, Frank, you'll send the digital file, and then Frank can comment on what's needed with regard to the change in the use. Um, Joel is going to send over whatever permit application was transmitted to Orange County Sewer District, um, to Sean, and... Have a meeting with the fire district. Right, so we'll set up a meeting with the fire district. You, you messed up my mojo. <laughs> I was on a roll. Um, let's see what else. There's a few other things that were raised. Uh, oh, limits of disturbance on the plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. Check into stories. Just Architectural make review for the dumpsters, the fences, and whatever other modifications to the building. We need to add, we need to look especially into the fire code with regard to whether there's any other changes that are needed for fire access that affect the site plan and then we needed to show whatever the largest bus is, whether it can um, circulate through the cul-de-sac. And I'm raising the issue of, um, I'm not a big fan of one access into a school. Um, anybody so else wanna add? I have my list, limits of disturbance and fire code access. Was there another issue? And then stories you raised. Narrative for all the waivers and the need for them. Which you, you gave, you know, I think it could just be adding, maybe just revising what you have there and just to specify the mm -hmm. issues you talked about, about the maximum number and, and all that. Right, you're going to um, confirm the maximum number that it's, as you've said, as opposed to the client possibly wanting to evaluate more. Um, we're going to check visibility. Um, going back just to, to the narrative too, and then sure. also the, the landscaping. Well, I think the board is going to, are you, is the board going to coordinate its site with uh, Karen and the conservation board or is that a separate visit? I thought the intention, I thought the intention was to have one site visit. I mean, well, the, we didn't actually say that, but so whoever can get out there at the same time, sometimes just given schedules, we actually go out there twice, two different groups. Okay. So we're going to see how many people we can get out there, but we may need a separate date depending on everybody's availability. Okay. So we'll coordinate, and then we'll let Joel know so that you can um, okay. get us on the site. Talked about. And just don't right. Right. Oh, I mean, we need. And we, not, we need to talk about the determination. To talk about it on yeah, Tuesday. So I think Sean said he'd call. Ben. Okay. I'm yeah. uh, just going back real quick to the narrative. Uh, we had mentioned the, the max number and also the landscaping, whether you meet the landscaping or you need a waiver, those set the item seven and eight, I believe it was, which you might meet them based on what you already have there, but just to clarify in the narrative, whether you do or whether you're asking for the waiver. Okay. Uh, we did talk about a bond, well, those are all Sean's items, so they're in his memo, bonding and all that. And then just providing the angles of on the site plan of, um, you know, which direction you took the uh, pictures in. You were also gonna check the lighting. Right. To see if there was anything from a code perspective that mandated certain lighting. 
Um, we're going to also uh, bring up this item on our Tuesday agenda. We received a determination from the building inspector with regard to frontage on a road. And so we want to be able to discuss it on Tuesday because if for any reason we would want to appeal it, well, we can't hold it off to I think our next meeting. I think it's, it's 31 days. So we're going to discuss it on Tuesday, but it's just related to Ben's determination, which I don't know if you've received or not. No. <clears throat> it came today. What was his determination? Uh, I don't know if Ashley has it. He asked him to look into whether you needed the waiver, and he determined, I believe, that it was for you the had major, the frontage for the major collector road based on that portion that's on Cromwell. So he's, he determined that we had frontage. Yes. So we don't need, we don't need a waiver. waiver. I think what, what well, the I'm chair questioning was whether the that the was determination. So I wanted to talk about it on Tuesday because it talks about having the school having frontage on a major collector. The intent was not just to have frontage on a major collector and then get access from another road. The intent was actually to get access from the major collector so that traffic would be directed in that way. And so I want the board to have an opportunity to discuss that and whether we want to at all have that. The, and it comes down to what a frontage is. And so my concern is both this site, but as well as establishing some kind of determination that affects determinations about frontage in general. Okay, but I, at the June meeting, the determination of the board was to refer this to the building inspector. The building inspectors made a determination. Um, I, I, we didn't. We didn't send that, so the board sent it to the building inspector. No, no, I get it, but, the, no. but that was what the board determined to do at its June meeting, to determine it for the building inspector. I mean, now that he's made a determination, I mean. Can we not appeal it? This, you, you, the planning board appeal to a zoning board of appeals? I For a building de determination, for a building inspector determination. I, the building, any determination by the building inspector could be appealed by, uh, if it's an individual person that's making it, or any agreed party, or an official, or a board of the town under town law, but I think the, the so issue here is the question of, of precedent and whether whether this front, or as the chair was saying, whether frontage uh, was meant to mean something other than Whether frontage means, access. right, whether it means access. And specifically, we're asking that because um, we don't have a definition of frontage. That's the issue. And so there's other sections of the zoning that come into play and we want to have the opportunity, because we just got it, to look at Ben's determination to see if he was looking more globally at the concept of frontage um, rather than more specifically related to this particular collector road. So maybe we can ask the whatever who drafted that zoning. <laughs> well, I, that's what I say. I, and I happen to know what the intent was. <laughs> but I don't know how frontage dropped away, to tell you the truth. Could we get a copy of that letter? Yes. I'm going to email it to you right now. Thank you. Yeah. And the board, so the point is the board is just hearing about this now. You haven't seen it. We haven't evaluated it. And it's only because it's really dealing with a word that's used, frontage, which has to do with access. And because this sets a precedent, not for just for this, but for other applications. And we only have a certain time frame within which to appeal it to the ZBA, which is why we're looking at it on Tuesday. So we wanted to give you notice of this so you're aware of it. Okay. Um, I, your board's going to do what it's going to do. I mean, again, you did refer to the building inspector. The building inspector made his determination. So, so we will go or with the waiver or... Without the waiver. I mean, it doesn't sound like we need a waiver at this point, but. Right. Right. I mean, it sounds like, well. But we want clarification on frontage. So we want to have an opportunity to discuss it with the board on Tuesday. Um, anything else? Nope. Ash, you're good. Members, you're good? When do, does the board anticipate having a public hearing on this matter? 
When does the board anticipate having a public hearing on this matter? I mean, it seems like we're sort of fine uh, We're, we're consulting with various agencies. We just circulated the notice of intent. So I would imagine, you know, when we get that information and the, and the plans are updated as necessary and revised to a point where it's reasonable to hold the public hearing. I mean, I don't think we have to make a secret determination before then, so. Before, the, I mean, secret public hearing. contemplates negative deck being made as early in the process as possible. Um, seems like we're going past that, but I'm just asking when the public hearing is, because I think, you know, again, I think the application is complete. I mean, we're fine tuning it, which is great. I'm just, you know, wondering when do we engage, you know. Yeah, I don't think we're ready to make that determination this evening. I because think there's too much the outstanding from from these agencies. But if their next meeting is going to be the 30 days, if there's anything else specific that the board wants at that meeting, I mean, kind of just went through the laundry list there. Obviously, things like well testing that's going to be needed to address seeker that type of thing. Um, well, issue which we're well, the reason I'm asking about representative projects in schools is because I want to make sure I understand the traffic in particular. Because that's really, it's a school coming off of a cul-de-sac with one access. I don't know what the traffic load's going to be like. So that's why I was asking, is there a comparable that we could look at from a traffic perspective? Uh, again, it's very simple. Um, if even you look at even you look at the bigger schools, the girls schools by itself usually doesn't have any significant amount of traffic besides busing the kids in and out. And that depends on the amounts of kids. Right, so even the teachers are but even, even I was just gonna say, Joel, even from that perspective, a couple of schools, even if they're bigger, um, if we know sort of what the capacity is of the kids and then we look at the, the parking, that would be useful. So, so, so like a what, ratio. So that's what I want to point out. So even though if you go to, one, to any of the girls' schools, the mm -hmm. example, the Glenwood School, in the middle of the day, you'll probably not see any car parked. I don't know how much teachers there is there, but more than 10, more than 15. Mm -hmm. You will probably see three or four or five cars from the managers and the and other employees, their uh, cleaning crews or something like that in the building because there is no, the teachers are not driving and the kids are not driving. So everyone, the kids are being bussed in and the teachers or they're coming together with the bus or there is a van that basically brings them in the morning and get them home at their home. So there's really very low amount of traffic unless a kid has an issue and needs to go home in the middle of the school, there's a taxi picking up the kid. That's where it is. It's very simple. It's not like there is any um, hidden things behind it that can change all characters or everything. But right. if you go probably, if you go to the bigger schools, you also see in the middle of the day it's quiet. Just there's nothing coming in and out. And just in the morning and at night, you have like the, the morning and afternoon, you have the buses coming in and, go, and out. That's it. Are they currently in session? What? Are they currently in session? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry? At this school? Is no, 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 is, no. Is Glenwood, it, is, is Glen, are, are schools in schools general? Schools. Oh, right. I think <laughs> today they are. Uh, I think there might be school finishing up next week, and then they have a break in the starting the school, new school year. So right now they're in session? Yes. So we want to pop by and take a look? Yeah. Okay. Um, I was going to ask a question. It's strictly the girl. I'm not talking about the boys' school. It has a little bit different, but the teachers, some of the teachers are having cars. But oh, where in general are the kids coming from? From a, from a trip distribution perspective, are, they, are you expecting the buses to go be heading back and forth on Cromwell from the east? I will, I will try to ask for a list of the... Uh, kids' names and with the addresses, and I can take a look on the routes. I think. I don't know. Uh, well, I think with the buses, you you can find out from the bus routes how they're doing the existing. Like Perhaps how just they a, did a the bus route. Still yeah, out. I think if maybe just the if you were interested in the the bus route or yeah. what major or what roads. The bus route, right? The bus or routes. Residential. And if there are vehicles. I mean, buses. I mean, we're talking about four buses. This isn't going to create any level of service issue at any intersection, I'd imagine, or. Well, I mean, that's why we're trying to get the information and why we're looking at Glenwood School, so that we could see the parking situation, how teachers arrive, to get a sense of this. Because this is unique. This isn't 
I you get know. It. No, I, so you want to understand what's going on a site. I understand that, but I think if we're starting to talk about trip distribution and stuff like that, I mean, I think we're talking about such a small level of traffic that it's. So you're saying four buses, that's based on how many kids? We're talking about. In other words, kids. were you. I think, I think we, uh, the last time we did, the calculation was based that we probably need three. We just added four buses just for protection. If there is a need for your 125? To, yeah, just if there is a need to distribute more big, more areas, like the areas are too big and we need to have like four buses we added. So far they had, they used only uh, two or three, uh, like they did, they used vans before when they did it before. I don't know how much, but. Uh, when they did it before, what do you mean? They were in use, the building. Okay. Yeah. So, so the point is, I don't know how many kids were coming and going when you say they were in use before. I don't know that that was 125 kids. So, you know, vans versus buses, you know, I just want to make sure that that's the reasonable number. And that's why I was saying it'd be useful to compare it to another school. So, so I would understand sort of, again, busing, how many... Again, there is amount of kids, how much kids can get on a bus. I think it's over 40. Uh, how much is the I think it's a number we had later. Around last 40. Time. What? Around 40. Around 40. So four buses, you have 160. So that should include, if we have teachers, ki kids, whatever, it's 125, should be more, more than 100% comfortable on four buses. So if we're providing that and we're stating, and then the, and the special permit would be four buses, I don't know what is, what do we need to dig in, where do we need to dig in and to try to find that there is going to be 10 buses? What is the concern? No, we just want to uh, make sure and, and confirm that that's the case. So understand the case. where they're coming from. But what does it matter where they're coming from? That's what I... I no, I, because I, I'm wondering so which direction of Cromwell are they coming from? Are they making a left onto Cromwell or making of, a right onto probably Cromwell? Probably depends which it, some of the buses... Dan, will. it does matter because if there's some kind of turning radius, if there's a sight distance issue at that intersection, we have to consider it. That's why it's important. So basically, there is probably... Um, some of it coming from one side and some of it from the other side. Depends on the, like I said, I need to check on the routes and to see where the addresses of this, and that probably that will trigger from where the buses are going to come, so. I don't think that our cul-de-sacs were designed for buses because I don't believe Monroe Woodbury goes up cul-de-sacs. Correct. So the point is that we're introducing something to a cul-de-sac which wasn't originally designed for buses because of the fact that so, you know, it, was, it was based on kind of policy of the public school district. So, so, so we're just asking about what the routing is from a sight distance perspective coming in and out, you know, and then I'm just generally asking, you know, the four buses assuming that you put all the kids in those four buses, and that's not necessarily the way bus routes work. So that's why I'm asking. Sometimes they might be at 80% capacity because it has more to do with where they come from sometimes than, you know, a bus isn't going to travel eight hours to get every single, you know, kid on a school bus to then go to school. So routing is, does matter, and we're trying to understand a reasonable number of, A, how many buses, but based on your congregation that you're serving, which may all be in one area, you know, and I'm not asking for addresses for sure. I just want to know in general what the routing is. In general, probably especially into from Cromwell into the into the um, cul-de-sac. I will check on that. Basically, in my bel I didn't see the list and I didn't went through with them. But based on my assumption, it will be probably spread out all over the um, town of Monroe, village of Kirijol, Woodbury, and I think other probably areas. the. You know, if you're concerned with that turning into the cul-de-sac off of Cromwell, then I think from both directions you could consider, right, I think that would be something right. that if you, I don't know what you'd be looking for to show that that's not an issue or, or that type of, so, so that we one, have sight distance. There's one, one more thing that you mentioned about the cul-de-sac not being designed for buses. Usually I believe a cul-de-sac for a bus turn around needs to be 45 feet radius. And I believe the cul-de-sacs are bigger. Number two, the bus is not going to go into the cul-de-sac before getting into the cul-de-sac, it goes, to, it goes, makes a right into the site, and the turnaround will be on the side, then it comes out, it's just right before, it's not like the bus is going to use the cul-de-sac, the no, street I'm, I'm, cul-de-sac to not turn around the bus. No, I'm not so saying it is, I'm out. just saying that the roads were not 
originally designed, a cul-de-sac in the town of Monroe was not necessarily designed to handle buses. So I don't know to what extent they were, that was, con that affects in any way sight distance and other matters, that's all. Yeah, it's a, it looks like a normal yeah. public road. It's not I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that, but normally you don't have buses coming in and out of that road. Normally they're stopping down at the base. And so that's why I'm mentioning the sight distances coming in and out. Now, I would think it'd be better because they're more elevated in a bus to be able to see, but I don't know. You know, maybe a tree's obstructing. So that's why the routing is being requested. If you're making all left turns, you know, well... You said it's going to be coming from all over, so it's probably lefts oh, and rights. So you just need to show sight distance and the intersection on a map. On, I don't think we should go and restrict ourselves, because even though now I will tell you it comes right. only a right, a year from later, there's different uh, students um, from different right. and they're moving. So I don't yeah, you're right. So you should, you should so that's, that's from either way, you should evaluate it to make sure so it's turning need, radius and everything else is okay. So you need sight distance on that intersection that should be evaluated? Okay. Of so Allison and Cromwell Hill. Of uh, Allison, Allison and Cromwell. Cromwell Hill. Allison Just Allison Cromwell. and Cromwell. So Coming in and out. Do, just to be clear, you're asking us to do... A site distance, distance evaluation. Route. Yes. And to make sure that you can turn adequately into it. And you're right, Dan. If, if these were designed with emergency service vehicles in mind, then it shouldn't be an issue. But just please check. Yeah, I believe all the routes still there should be... Uh, yeah. Are having sufficient... Uh, Side distance. I don't know what roads. Okay. I don't have the history. I mean, I wasn't around when Allison Drive was okay. approved. No, that's fine. Okay. So I think you have a pretty long laundry list. Well, not so long laundry list. why we're looking forward to moving forward the process forward with your board. We will get back to you on these issues. Um, I think your board should be in a position shortly to make a determination of significance and hopefully hold a public hearing soon. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So Noreen will be coordinating over the next few days about getting out onto the site. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. <laughs> no. All right, so we're going to go back. I'm going to do Target next. Uh, is Target here? Yeah, let's do Target next. <laughs> <laughs> you get a break, Target. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Kevin Van Heis with Kimley Horn and Associates on behalf of the Applicant Target Corporation. When I was before you last, um, there were a few questions that were discussed and we were asked to provide a more detailed landscape plan, which we did in our latest submission. Um, we've identified where the plants are proposed and a plant list that indicates the type, the species, uh, and the size. We were also asked to confirm two operational things with tar Target specific to that store. Uh, one was whether or not the location of the proposed storage containers would impact employee parking. And we were able to confirm that in fact they don't. There is no designated employee parking area. Employees are asked not to park in the front of the store, but there's nothing specific otherwise. We were also asked about whether or not employees would be pulling stock from the containers at night. The concern was whether or not lighting would be required. We confirmed with Target that they are not used at night after hours. It's a daytime operation. And I think that was the, was the bulk of the, of the questions. We had already addressed um, the idea of using one of the existing loading positions behind the building and that's not an option for Target because they use all of them. 
Um, so I think, I think that's it. I, am, I did receive new comments this evening. Um, one of them is asking for additional screening on the other side, on access point two on our plan. We have no objection to that. I note that that portion is grade separated pretty significantly, the entrance from the parking, and there is an existing retaining wall there. But we have no objection to providing additional landscaping there. That's just the reason why we didn't provide it initially. And I'd like to get an understanding of what the next step in the process is. This is the time of year that Target needs those storage containers as they head back to school uh, in the holiday season. So if, we can, if I can leave tonight with some kind of an understanding that I can report back to Target, that would be great. Um. Would you like to start, Sean? Please? Sure. Um, so we had discussed there's going to be 15 parking spaces that are going to be eliminated. Uh, I did look back at the memo that was prepared for the Harriman Business Park and Space 4, uh, 4E, and at that time there were an excess of 94 parking spaces. So if those 15 were to be utilized, there would still be an excess of 79 uh, for Lot 4. Um, uh, Mr. Van Heis brought up the, my suggestion of the screening um, for access one. I, I understand the, the elevation change. I, I didn't know if it would also be visible from any of the other site pads, you know, that are somewhat nearby. Um, so that's, you know, the reason for the suggestion. Um, I did forward the landscape plan to Karen uh, for her to review. I, I did not receive any comments back on that yet. So, um, and, uh, you had mentioned that there won't be any overnight, um, you know, accessing of the the storage containers. So I just asked if a, a note to that effect could be placed on the uh, site plan. Do we have any kind of detail that shows the size or what kind of storage container it is? Um, no, and it, that was uh, th that was brought up last time. That architectural review by the board is um, going to be, you know, reviewed as part of this process, so if you can provide pictures or... Yeah, we can provide it. I can actually add pictures to the plan set. It's the, it's the, it's the container that's out there now. It's, this, it's exactly that container. There'll uh, just be two additional, same size and color. What, I'm trying to remember what they are. Let me go back to the... Shipping container. Yeah, it's, a, shipping it's containers. a tan yeah. shipping container. Yeah, it's, you can see it here. I saw that's, it. That's it. Yep, that's it. Is there any logos on it, or it's just a plain shipping container? It's just a plain shipping container. It may have the name of the, of the rental company on it. So it's being rented by some... It's a lease. It's a lease. There it is. Okay. Other two guys... Are you going to stack them, or are they going to be next to it? No, they're, they're all. No, I, I didn't mean stack in height. I meant, um, you know, are they going to be one long line, or are you going to have three next to one another? There are two in a line and one in, se separate okay. from that. It's just what fits in the existing okay. parking bays. And then how, how is there going to be landscaping in the parking lot? It's not in the parking lot. It's at the entrance. Oh. It, so okay. that... Thank that's you. that's where you would see it when you okay. turned into the store. So it's just real quick. It's in a location. It doesn't affect sight distance, right? Because it's in those parking stalls. Correct. Okay. And these are the okay. Yeah, there's a pretty good grade separation on that exit, uh, access point there. The the one to the south, page south, that one is visible, and that's why we proposed the six additional evergreen trees. And the, the trees that are that we're proposing, they already exist as part of the existing screening on the site, so that it's consistent with what's out there today. Okay. And for loading or um, you know filling of these boxes, are they is all the material coming in 
through the store and then brought out to there, or is a truck pulling up next to these containers? No, I believe it's unloaded in the store. Um, <coughs> I think it's cycling from the material that's in the store out of the store for storage, while the new material is brought in through the back at the loading position. So they're, they're moving these containers back and forth? No, the containers don't move, just the, the material inside the store that's being, so for instance, if it's um, at this point in the year, summer stock would be moving out because they would be receiving fall stock or back to school stock at the loading position in the store. So they would move it out into the storage container. What happens to it afterwards? So the season goes by, what happens to the summer merchandise in the container? Well, it's either used in the next year or it's removed from the site. Remind me, is this a temporary trailer permit? No. And to determine a accessory Accessory use. storage for okay. the, the retail use. Okay. Um, so this could be there for a very long time. Okay. The way that it's shown on the site plan, um, right now it's going from like curb and then there's an opening over here, eight feet. Um, but this is actually two units, correct? That are next to each other? Correct. So how does one access <laughs> this particular storage unit? Because it's kind of right up against right. the curb. It, it's probably moved so that it's not a full eight feet on one side and it would be split between the two. So they would be end to end. So what, what are the size of these containers? Are they 40 feet? Yeah, I think they're 40 feet. Yeah, it looks like you have 40 feet here. Yeah, 40 feet by eight feet. Um, so I think that, uh, so th this is a question. So I don't know if they're bringing pallets out there you know, if, if it's like um, it's power jack or some kind of... So it, some of it may be palletized, yeah. yeah. So if it's palletized, are they going to actually be able to get into that four-foot space on either side? Yeah, I don't believe that they would take the pallet inside. I think it's used just to transport it, and then it's somehow organized from the end into the, into the unit. So we already waived the public hearing. We already classified this as a type two action. So I think we're just getting to the nitty gritty. Um, Ashley, did you have? FYI, that's an old plan. Oh, that is an older plan. I thought I loaded these up. Oh, yeah. so they are the same. There was a note about lighting on there previously. That's what was removed. Other than that, it's the same. But it's essentially in the same place. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so I think we're still showing the same position. So, you know, I think you need to just show this so that there's space to access it. Okay. Um, and then I guess we presume that uh, they're going to get access to this container through this side. And was there any plan to like X out one of the parking spaces to be able to get around there so that someone wouldn't necessarily park right here? Or when are they accessing the, um, the containers? They're accessing them during the day. We had not discussed um, eradicating any other spaces. I think that would be an operational thing. If there was someone parked there, they would deal with that at the store level. Okay. Yeah, I just, um, I didn't know whether it made sense to put something up there so that a car isn't parked there. I don't know, what do you think? You think that's necessary or let them figure it out? <laughs> <laughs> I still let them figure it out. Let them figure it out. Ultimately, it's gonna be the target's responsibility to keep cars away so that they can get into the... Right. Okay, all right. I would just, again, I would shift that one storage container. Okay. Were those all your comments, Sean? Yes. Okay. And Ashley? Do you have anything left? On this one? 
We've done it to type. Okay. So I think at this point we're just going to get whatever Karen's comments are okay. back. Um, board members, did you have any other comments? None? Pat? I've been to that site many times and I have <laughs> no problem with it. Okay. Anthony? No comment. Lisa? No, no comment. So why don't we have um, Ashy draw up a resolution? Uh, did, did, do we know when Karen will get back to? I'll, I'll ask her to make sure that she's got comments back. All right, so that we can. Maybe in uh, the interim, you know. Um, is there any way we could condition this upon the land? That's kind of, not really, because that's the main point, yeah. right? Um, we're just trying to figure out how to expedite this. So, and I don't think she'll have something by Tuesday, and then that would mean Ashley would have to turn something around. So that's not really enough time either. Oh, you were looking for. Yeah, I don't, I don't, just because you said this is the peak season, so I think right. we're going to have to wait till the first meeting of September. Okay. And hopefully, we'll approve it then. We'll okay. have Karen's comments, and um, we'll get so, them to you right away if you need to make. You know, if they're minor, then we can condition it. You know, we don't. And then we could approve the plan based the on the September. conditions. Yeah. So, share her contact information. Okay, but just to to address your comment, I can quickly reissue the plan with those new screening components on the other side, so that she's not reviewing it twice. Yeah, that'd probably be good. So I can get that to you next week. Okay. Yeah, and just make sure to send the copy to Noreen so that it's part of the record. Okay. That's, yeah, that's how I send them to Karen, so. <laughs> okay, we will do. So I, I think we're good for that. So we'll see you next month. Uh, September 9th. So, yeah, that's our first meeting, and then when's the second one? 21st. Okay. So it'll be one or the other. Those are actual, those are, those are not workshops. Those are. Those are meetings. Those are meetings. Okay. Yeah. We kind of had workshops. Meetings. Technically, I think this first meeting is called workshop. Yeah, the board could take right action at either one. It's not. Okay. Yeah, they're both noticed, and so we kind of have been doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda. So let's go back to the top. Is Raywood Drive. Thank, thanks, for, thanks for the break. <laughs> so I believe. Just what? We don't need it. Okay. This is an extension, mostly, right? Yeah, this is an extension. I think we're very close to the um, to the finish line here. There's some other paperwork that needs to be done. There is the I think the SWIP, the water, uh, the SWIP the agreement, the maintenance agreement needs to be signed. I think should be. Uh, completed. I think all the engineering issues are have been dealt with, and yeah, yeah we so. need we got a list. I think there's a check that the uh, uh, that the applicant needs to provide, so everything will be taken care of in the next couple of weeks. The main there's one more item that's the water agreement. That's the board. I don't know if that comes from the planning board. That's from the town attorney. It comes that there's some revision that should be made. We got one version and. We got a, another version now submitted to the village of Kirijol to review. Uh, the question is, what is the, if that's something that is necessary for this approval, and why is it necessary for this approval? Because I see it might be, I will be able to get at the one that seemed to be a little bit time. The water agreement is to ensure that the subdivision is going to have water and that's something that this board needs to so, you know ensure as far as any um so we did so we, have so, a, so we had a will to serve letter the we have the water agreement in place that says clearly that they can have water whatever they need to pay the language that's adding the town as a line to the to the agreement that's something that makes it a little so bit the, complicated. the issue is the the way the agreement's drafted it could be modified but what's been done was to add the town and so that if it's going to be modified, that the town has to approve any modification and, and they would not unreasonably withhold that, provided that the 
applicant is still able to get water from the village. So technically, if it's only between the village, the town's really the, uh, it's called a third party beneficiary of this agreement because they're relying on this water coming from the village to serve this mm -hmm. subdivision. So they could turn around tomorrow then and say we're getting rid of this agreement and then you have this subdivision approved and there's no water for it. So that's where, where that came in from. Mm -hmm. And I think the way I had sent I think, I think it was this week, some modifications, I think, see what they say. Better, and I'm working so see that. what they say and, yeah. um, you yeah, know, if it's something that we could work out, but I don't think that should hold up okay. that unnecessarily. I'll let me work on that, so that's probably need another week or two for that, too. So hopefully we'll get it done soon. So basically, with that, we need some type of, I don't know if uh, we need necessary three months, but I don't think we want to, there's some type of map things, uh, we should do it probably a three month extension so we can get Yeah, it so done. that's how the, the board, you have the ability to grant 90 day extensions under the, the town law, they're in 90 day increments, mm -hmm. so that's what it would be. I calculated that the nearest, um, we always do it to a planning board meeting, that way in case it's gonna expire, you, you have them before you. Right. So it would be a 90 day extension can be granted to the October 19th, 2021 meeting, that would be the closest your, the 90 days runs on November 10th, but the way your meeting schedule is October 19th is the closest before the 90 days expires. So with that, I'll make a motion that we extend the approval of the Bayzay Properties Raywood Drive three lot subdivision to October 19th, 2021. May I have a second? I'll second. Noreen? Anthony Vaccaro? Aye. Lisa McQuaid? Aye. Bonnie Franson? Aye. Jason Sorinsky? Aye. Pat Shea? Aye. Okay, so that is approved, the extensions. So next item on the agenda is Joel Stossel. Okay. So, I think last meeting, um, it wasn't the last month, it was two months ago. I don't remember the date, whatever. We had a very productive discussion there about how we're going to try to um, amend this uh, application and update the uh, view of the building and to make it, first of all, more accurate as to show the um, accurate col colors and and incorporate the existing features from the building into the design and, tra and, and to make the uh, less passable changes that we need to, but on the other hand, to keep the building as a, something that should uh, be satisfactory to the board. So we did um, provided new plans, new renderings, and I think I just received um, uh, the comments from Sean. I think he basically pointed out very well the details what has been changed. Um, one of the things was that the, the, plant, the board wants us to remove the wording, the doctors and that you trust. And we said we changed, we did an enclosure of the, under the ramp, we're showing like a, a pressure treated wood that painted that same color as the front siding and whatever the siding goes on the side. We changed the side, we're proposing to change the siding next to the door entry that shouldn't be, there's now three different colors, so it should be more attractive. Um, one of the things that the, was, we, try, we tried, if you go now with this picture to the site, you will see we basically implemented, tried the best, maybe you find a small spot. If there is, if the building is dirty, we didn't uh, include that in the picture, but every um, light fixture, uh, uh, like there's a lot of them showing on the plan, there's the AC machine, that's the location, and we propose it actually screening around that. We, we basically implemented every detail on the building. The same thing is that the white trims, it didn't reflect it correctly on the previous rendering, but now it's basically that's existing. The white corner trims are existing now. The actual um, color of the roof, you can see now that's actually how it is, and it's not proposed to be changed, and wasn't proposed to be changed, but somehow the actually approved rendering didn't, didn't reflect the collect, correct color and I think that basically uh, brings everything together. And uh, I know there was a comment about the lightings, which we did a lot of research about um, any other type of lightings. We can still add shields, 
to the lights, but that's the best outdoor lighting that's available. And the, but the local suppliers, the, also my office did that same research besides the electrician. So with that, I'm ready to take any comments from the board and hopefully we can move on to get this approved and maybe with some minor modifications. So oh, Sean, why don't you start with your comments? Sure, so I kind of did a, like Joel said, a bullet by bullet point of each of the photos and compared the new renderings versus the old. So I don't know if you want to go through those bullet by bullet or? I think that would, sure. that would be useful. All right, so Joel had mentioned the, uh, originally the air conditioner was going to be that, which is actually shown right there underneath the Carester sign, that was going to be moved to the rear. Um, but in this rendering, they're proposing to put screening around it. Um, you you want to stop and do your opinions on all, every point, or you want to just wait till the end? No, I don't remember provide, telling that it's going to be changed. This was it was completely absent from the renderings. It, it wasn't on the rendering, so that's what I said. It wasn't correct. It didn't, so like the old renders didn't correctly um, show everything that's on the site, and that's what we did now. So once we realized that with the pictures on the previous meeting I that it's there, we can't move the air conditioner around the building because you don't have the connection there. I do remember a conversation that I, I thought the air conditioning was going to be relocated okay. to the rear. But Was it the 620 design book? Uh, no, it was August something. August something? Yeah, I sent I it. I know you sent it yeah. to me. <laughs> and then I was going to save it, and it was already there. But, of course, let's see where it went. I'm sure I... Exterior, here we go. There's a 7.6. And was it this one? Eight, 16. I got it. Okay, so let's get to the design book. All right. So, Sean, your point is that there was landscaping shown in the front. Uh, no, that the air conditioner, uh, right. the condensing unit on the front. Right, it's not was there. Was absent, yeah. Right, and that there was just landscaping in the front. Right. And so now, the proposal shows lawn, and this will remain here. Right. Um, is it actually all sitting under this... I guess this is a soffit? Yes. Does it fit completely under there? Mm, I'm not sure. I think and is this, is this concrete down here? What is it sitting on? Some kind of pedestal. Okay, so there's no concrete there. It's sitting on a pedestal. Usually that's how AC machines are sitting, usually on a pedestal. <laughs> Not that pedestal. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. I don't know what you've seen there. So it looks like a. Question. It looks like a pedestal, like a chair. <laughs> On chair. Oh, yeah, exactly. So um, that's not actually how condensers are are set, and I think they're normally on a concrete pad. Um, it's like the the precast concrete usually that they're putting down. Yeah. It. Yeah. Okay. Is that the rear? Yeah, the, yeah, the opposite side of that. The opposite uh, side uh, of the doors. I don't know down what you would call Sort of on the, the slope going down to the other? No, the, uh, to the physical therapy place, yeah. Okay. Let me see. Is this the side where they had patched up? Nope. Okay, that's all I need to know. So my question is, why is that one condenser in the front instead of in the back with the rest of the condensers? Um, my understanding is that this is serving that corner area of the building. So it's basically, that's the reason it's there. Uh, but I can check on that. To yeah, see if it's because honestly, I'd rather move it to the back um, unless there's a real reason why it can't be. And if it does stay in the front, it has to be on a proper concrete pad. Um, okay. And then that enclosure, here's my concern. Normally you don't put enclosures tight against a condenser. It needs airflow. 
So I don't think that's going to be the size of that enclosure. I don't think, I don't think it's going to fit under that soffit. I think that needs to be worked up if it's left there, because in, in the end, if you put it in the back, um, then we don't need the screening on it. Well, technically it should be screened back there too, but at least they're all together. Yeah. And then maybe you could put a single board if they're all in the back to screen those. But that really wasn't the focus of our... So I, will check the, I will check the size of the closure uh, if we need it to be bigger. I don't okay. And if it's... Basically, there's some little space between the between the pieces, so that there can be some air. It might be that's enough. I remember that should be enough, but I will check on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, uh, the signs um, from uh, the signs were removed from the top portion of the facade, so they were up. Um, you know, now they're in the, the recessed part of the front of the building there. Yeah, exactly. They were up on the red part before. Yep. Um, and just a reminder, we'll need the square foot analysis. It's, it's technically less square footage, but I can... But you're also it. less square footage on the facade because the facade was going to be built up before. No, the, but the way it's being mentioned is the length of the facade that gives the... The length of the facade that gives the amount of square footage. I thought it was square footage. footage of the sign and the square footage of the building, of the facade. I think it goes about... Eh, we, the, we can look whatever. at it. We'll, we'll yeah. look at that, okay. Um, so looking at the lighting on either side of the sign, is yes. there lighting also on both? Is there going to be lighting here as well on the Williamsburg side, or is it just on the Kerster oh. side? So I had a comment about that, and I think actually there are the sconces there already. So all the two sconces on the left and the two sconces on the right are there already, exist. You can't, yeah. All right, so the, the sign is not there, but the sconces are. Correct. And there Correct. are these specific sconces. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can see one of them here. I think the other one's hidden behind the yes, tree. Yes, you can see it on the other side. Hey, can I ask a question while we have up? Sure. Yep. So the Williamsburg side, are, are people going to enter on that side? Or is that just um, a sign? Just a sign. Just okay. a sign. We're showing on the, okay. other, on the other picture, you can see where the entrance that's, is. That's what I thought. Thank you. Yeah, because yeah, the, the bottom here is actually a slope that goes down, and yeah, that's there, where it's there's just... No, there's no access to the building from that side. And you have the Tyvek on that side, because you pulled the whatever was on the back, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We have that correct. Okay. okay. Uh, so, so does anyone have an issue with the lights here? The, the having the sconces instead of having the uh, um, overhead down to the signs. I'll just say that at night, um, you're not going to really see those signs right. <laughs> because the sconces aren't going to, you know, provide light to mm -hmm. the signs. So it would actually, from your perspective, be better to go back to client to make sure that he's not coming up with the lights <laughs> yeah, over, exactly. overnight. I that he's, that he's, he's spending this money on some signs that you're really not going to see in the evening. And maybe he doesn't have evening outer, hours and it doesn't matter. But if that's his intent, I, I don't think those sconces are going to do it for him. Okay. We'll check on that. And I would be fine if we went back to the, the recess lighting. Right. Okay. Next one was, uh, Joel already mentioned the Doctors You Trust was eliminated, and then Joel also uh, mentioned that the white trim was added um, around that front elevation. White trim has been added to the elevation. So you're talking about this trim in here? Yeah, right. the trims at the corners. Okay. And so previously there was no trim. Uh, there was like a wooden type of uh, trim on the side, the recess part, so it's making a, a, the dividing between the red and the brown. What were the materials proposed here and here originally? 
deciding. Okay, I'll have to look at that. Okay. Vinyl siding. So that's the same thing here. Going to be vinyl. What? Vinyl siding. You mean yes. vertical vinyl? Uh, vertical vinyl, correct. It's boards and battens that's being called. I'm sorry? It's being called board and battens, something like that. Like board and batten. Yeah. Yeah. Can you add the actual materials to the design book for whatever's being? Sure. Yeah, I think we need a design book that has the specifics, not so just a couple of, ren you know. So these are renderings that are showing us how it's been redesigned, but the other one had like a design book that had the materials. It doesn't have to be the full design book, but we definitely want the materials this well, time. We can add that. That's not as the colors, but you have the colors there. We'll I think make already. like material and a color chart at least. Like yeah, that'd be great. Something like and that. I, I personally like this red better, this maroon rather than the bright red. <laughs> yeah, me so too. I appreciate that. So that is a more maroon red, correct? Correct. Okay. So that's why it'd be good to have swatches or something specified. Okay. Go ahead, Sean. It's basically yeah. the if you can see the siding the name from the siding model is redwood. So. We can get an actual material here if you want at the next meeting. Okay. Um, and so the materials, actually for the signs, what are the materials of the sign itself? Are they like some kind of vinyl plastic? I think it was uh, the designer last time specified, but I'm not so familiar with that, but I can get you the details. Okay. Yeah, because how do they, m so they must have just a couple of mounting points Correct. Right, to put the sign up and, and affix it to the wall? Right. Okay. Because this is showing like you have a very thin line. If I see this in here? Right. I'm just wondering how do you, again, maybe there's just a couple of points of. I believe there is a couple of points, like the lettering. Every letter is also usually thin and you put it on. So there is some. Or, or is there going to be a bar or something? I just want to, if she could specify, is each letter just a separate mount? Okay. And I think that's okay for me. Um, I think it was comparable, I believe, to what they were going to do before. All right. So that was it I had, uh, other than the colors, obviously, the, that was it for the changes to the front. Okay. And there was no landscaping? Were there bushes, landscaping, no. anything originally? There was no, nothing proposed at the first place. Um, the only thing was a planter box. At okay. the and entrance. a few bushes right in that corner. Uh, the bushes was only for the second submission, not not on the proof plans. On the, on the proof plans, there was... Oh, they were on their proof plans. Yeah. It was here in the rendering, but wasn't specified on the site plan that's being implemented. Uh, it was discussed at that time, the dead bushes. Well. It wasn't in the I'd resolution as listed as. Yeah, I'd like, maybe Ashley can weigh in on that because it was part of the pattern book that was the rendering that was part of the approval. So if there was landscaping shown in the renderings, that's what we anticipated. And if it wasn't shown in the site plan, sort of what? I remember there was specifically questions about it, if that reflects actually, we said that it was just fine tuning the rendering, but that's the reason it wasn't implemented on the site plan too. This does go to your architectural review and this design book was basically to reflect the architectural design and your architectural review does include landscaping. So I think the site plan really focused on the ramp and those um, parking areas, those issues versus the actual visual, which relied on, I believe the design book was specifically listed in the resolution. I mean, each specific item in the design book wasn't spelled out again in the, re um, in the uh, resolution. Some items were where there needed to be some clarity there, but I think if, if, you if that's what we expected or anticipated. Yeah, if there's something again, that's shown. Again, it's up to you to uh, ask and add some more stuff. I just fully understand we're going for an amended site plan, but just. Yeah, I, I mean, I would like to see some landscaping over there at the base. 
because I think it's kind of plain. Is that and it's something it's that's maybe a uh, hardy, lower maintenance, but a nice, um, maybe a nice kind of shrub that's more evergreen, so it stays there year round. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, maybe a, something low, like a two feet high, spaced. Maybe we can, can we set that so we I can add it right away and not go back and forth with that. Yeah, I mean, why don't you write us what some ideas of what you might put there and how many and where it would go? Okay, which areas? Um, well, this, you're def. I this think corner. I think yeah, because this is the area that's visible from mm -hmm. the road. So I think to kind of soften it up in this area, unless anybody else thinks differently. I don't feel strongly about it. Okay. Anybody? Do you care? <laughs> Yeah, that's why I was thinking not like a planting bed, not necessarily a flower bed, unless they want to do that, but it's definitely lower maintenance if it's if it's like a, a shrub, a hardy Box shrub, yeah. Just, yeah. I'm thinking about the practicality of mowing around it and how it's going to be maintained. And if you add another feature, you know, just... Okay. Out, but like Okay, Lisa. I think the renderings that are provided this evening are much better than what we've seen in the past. So if, uh, you know, I don't have an opinion either way with if there's plantings. If they maintain it and put the grass the way that it is, I think it's much, it's an improvement over what we've seen already. Okay. So there's really no consensus on the landscaping. <laughs> <laughs> I think at the next Sorry. meeting there may be a couple more thoughts, but two peepers, two people aren't here, um, so we'll we'll move on for this for now. Uh, so you want to continue south elevation? So this is yeah. the south elevation, right. okay? Um, so they proposed the wooden s skirt, so to speak, along the bottom of the wooden ramp to try to hide the structural members. So basically that will be a treated, a pressure treated wood painted the same color as the siding. Prevent trying to take down the existing one and just try to hide the, uh, Basically. the, the uglier members of the ramp, right? Correct. So it, is it at the intent that the wooden railing is gonna remain yes. and just be painted? And be painted, correct. Okay. So the original was... So we basically implemented the, like we, we tried to do, do, if you compare that with existing picture, you will see it's very, uh, the best accurate possible showing, uh, reflecting that what's there and basically painting that existing uh, railing. So and I think you can see it's, whatever, it's a nice picture. It's not. And then the, those railings right there that are coming out towards the driveway, those were eliminated because? I think it's not necessarily needed because it's, uh, the reason was needed if we have more than a eight, I believe a 8% pitch. I don't think it's an 8%. I need to check on that. I got, I saw your comment on that. What I can't tell from this, because it's a rendering, um, uh, how much space there is to get here to the sidewalk up to the ramp. Like how much concrete skirt is there in this location? And I don't know if it's just gonna be the same as what's there already. Um, I personally am not a big fan of this railing, this um, skirt. I think it's trying to make do with something that was added that wasn't supposed to have been. And I think the from metal the building. From the other hand, this, if you look at the character of the building by itself, this is not like a updated new modern building. It's an existing building that we actually made much better looking than it was before, even before removing the windows, whatever it was. This building, the proposal is really a major improvement on the building. I'm not talking about what was approved as a rendering, but I'm talking about the existence of the building. Um, so with that, the railing, the existing railing painted and 
matched even better in, in the character of that building than a proposed metal railing that I don't see necessary to have that there. I understand as, as per the discussion last time, we did an improvement on the red. There is, there's much improvements even on this layout more than what was originally approved and definitely more than what's there and what was there for years. So with that, I'm asking the board to consider that to keep as, as discussed in the previous approval Yes, the picture was uh, metal, but there is, wasn't specified in the. It it wasn't. There was no intention to fool anyone, to fool the board on that specific item, and and with that. Well, I don't think there the was. New, I don't think there was an intention to fool them. I think what was put in there didn't adhere to an approved. So now plan. with so now with the uh, with the new picture, I believe. The, if you open up the, not the approved one, the one that was submitted this month, I believe that's uh, attractive and matching in the character and I'm asking the board to consider that keeping the existence there and it should be like painted and applied as I'm shown in the rendering. Uh, so I am a no vote. I preferred the metal um, railing I, this wooden skirt, my concern about this is that it's just being patched on to what was already constructed. And I don't know how you're going to keep that wood from not rotting um, because it's basically placed to the ground, from the way that it's shown. From not what? Rot. That's basically a pressure treated wood and shouldn't have any issues. Yeah. Uh. Um, you have always, you have decks, you have I, sta wooden staircases outside that's basically being mounted I, I down. Think, I think the plan that you'd originally proposed was modern. Uh, it was attractive. And I think the railing actually was a big architectural feature. Um, further, there was not white um, in this area. So if you look here, you're, you're putting this white siding on, whereas... Oops, Whereas here, actually, they're existing. Keeping it existing, it was existing before. Right. So here, you had this darker color, and what was in the recesses was actually like a barn wood, according to the specifications. And then you had the metal playing off of the barn wood, and then you had, you know, those overhead canopies. And then you, I think you had some kind of barnwood surrounds at the doors. And I think that was really appealing. And I think this, um, our, you know, uh, I, I'm not a big fan of this white siding. Um, I don't know what this overhang is, if, unless it's already there. This was requested by the board last month that we should put some type of uh, roof oh, above roof. the door. But I think what, at least what I was expecting was something, again, more metal. And again, I'm just not a fan of this at all, this, uh, this ramp. That's, I'm one person. I'm gonna second that, but I'd also like to add that next to the door on the lower level, and what was proposed, there was this stone, uh, I guess, I stone guess around. Black, the stone block with some bushes on it. The 501 looks really nice, I think. I think it screams professional building. And I think what, yeah, you don't have that here now. And that ties into the metal rail and that just, it looks professional and the wood, the wood doesn't. It looks like somebody's deck. Um, that, that's attractive. That, I mean, we were. That screams professional medical build. The wood rail in next. That, the wood rail and just screams, you know, you're going into somebody's up someone's deck to have a you know a backyard party and i mean i like my doctor but i don't want to party with him <laughs> <laughs> i liked the way that you had that little landscape feature treatment at the entry i think it looked very professional whether that was i don't know if that was stone or barn wood but either way it was a, a nice touch that accents the entrances and even though that was vinyl, 
um, this board and batten type vinyl, because of the color, it looked more professional because of the color itself too. Because it was, I think it was gonna be more of a black charcoal type um, color. So, you know, here we're actually doing like a brown. It's not that charcoal, I think that was originally proposed, which if we're going to not have this and we're gonna put metal back in, then I would recommend that this go back to a charcoal color, which was originally proposed, because I thought that looked pretty sleek. Uh, charcoal color might have some issues because it makes a conflict. So the, f so the front should stay the same, the front to uh, root 208. Or if we, if we change that to charcoal, I, don't, I think it's going to conflict the red one. I think if this inset was charcoal, I don't think it would be a conflict. My wife says gray goes with anything, so. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's like we said last time. Since the big red circle, that he wasn't to be able to accomplish the big red circle for his, uh, for his uh, at that time, we're trying to keep this as much existing as we can. So we have the existing brown. We're looking not to change that. That's a big expense and a big burden in that days. And it's a big, um, one of the things is that everything is back ordered and double the price. And I think that's something also that the board should consider. Uh, to get, Pat? Just to get regular white siding. I have a project uh, in the village of Kirishol. Just to get regular, so basically, first of all, any um, any um, uh, this could be called the, the premium colors. There's no premium colors now to order. The standard colors, they tell you they have it. But okay, so it's, I'm waiting for over two or three months to get just white siding on my site. But had they built it the way they were supposed to from the beginning, it wouldn't have been an issue. <laughs> Good catch. <laughs> <laughs> it's one for Bonnie. <laughs> oh, sorry, Joel. <laughs> Pat, what are you thinking about, um, like a siding color as well as especially the, um, the, the skirt here and the, the railing? Well, I, I agree with what's been said. Uh, you know, I, certainly the metal railing looks <clears throat> a lot more aesthetically pleasing um, and more professional, for sure. Um, I used to have a company that put those up. The uh, it, it's a lot more expensive. <clears throat> a lot of labor involved in that as well. And as Joel said, the supplies, you know, because of the the COVID and everything, everything's backed up, everything's more expensive, it takes a lot more time uh, to get it. So I can see his resistance in doing it, but from a professional looking point of view, I agree with your, with your comments. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm having a difficult time. I agree that the metal railing is sharper and cleaner look. Um, I guess from a practical point, you know, the renderings look fine to me. Um, not really the right person to ask about those kind of aesthetics. Um, just wondering, you know, how do you control that? Well, should you mind? Sorry. Wondering how you would, you know, you know, the renderings look great. I'm wondering how that really looks in, in reality. And then the other point is from a practical aspect, I think the Metal railing is safer. You don't have to worry about splintering and people catching their hands on uh, splintered wood. And so the skirting and the railing becomes a maintenance issue of having to repaint it, restain it, whatever they're using. That's what I'm thinking. Lisa? Making a good point. Maybe the skirting could be a different material so it doesn't, so it holds up better in the weather. I did like the railings going to the side door. Uh, as far as maybe a patio, I don't know that that makes a difference because I think that the, um, you know, the, the concrete does look nice. Um, I do like these renderings better than anything else, but I can see where the skirting might not look a, as good as it could. And as far as the metal, maybe it'll hold up better than the wood. 
uh, you know, over time. But uh, if they, you know, if they can do a combination of what we talked about uh, with uh, putting the railing, the metal railing back at the side door and then doing a little something with the skirting and, you know, I don't know if, it, if it's already built, if it's a possibility to put the metal railings back, but um, I don't know. I think we'll have to see if you have any changes and then, and then decide then. Um, does anybody have an opinion about the white, all the white siding, which was not part of the original plan? It was going to be, again, this charcoal. There was some white. It was definitely here. Let's go it back. some white. I think it's, it matches. Like a cream? It matches better in now. With right. So, th so this was the white or whatever the color is. That's what's there now? Um, yeah. And... Now with the current picture, the, the new picture. You're proposing to leave more of that here instead of changing it. Correct. Any f strong feelings, anybody? I mean, I prefer the prior. I think this, again, is just a more professional, one color. Um, but what is what are everybody's feelings? Throw them out there. I, th I think you could put in some some shrubs in front of the wood skirt if that's the way this board wants to go, although I hope you don't. Um, I think you could make the white really appealing with the, the right color flower and shrubs. Um, what? Duh. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't. We were, so I was, we were talking about the white color, so you, oh. weren't, you weren't feeling that strong one way or the other about leaving that white there? No, I, I think you could go either way here. Um, mm -hmm. I think the brown is, is the more professional, more clean look. Mm -hmm. But I think the white, if you wanted to put some color in front of the rail, in, in front of the ramp or next to the door, I think the white would be a nice contrast there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, could you go back to that? I, I think by far that's the most professional look. That's all I would have yeah. to say. But as I explained last month, that's the reason I came with a new picture. But <laughs> again, if you give two options for people, everyone will choose the other one. <laughs> the one that we approved. 100 percent. That's the reason I'm here now. <laughs> if not, I wouldn't be here. But again, I think I got the feeling. I, I understand the board's concerns and comments, and I, I will offer that way. If you go back to the new picture, um, like I said last month, let's, if we can keep everything the same with that modifications that are updated, and I will discuss with the client and explain them the situation. I think I will be able to sell them the, the wood, to change from wooden railing to the metal railing, and I think that will make a big, even on that picture will also make a big difference and will and I think give, if I think if I think if you do that you still have to do something different with the skirt it will be a much better feeling with the what with the skirt For are you, are you going to put the metal railing on the wood deck the metal railing on the yes okay so so we'll so come up with I don't think that I don't in. I don't think that red, well, I mean, you could present it to us. I don't know if that red skirt works. Okay. And um, the metal railing will go a long way. I just think that's why I'm having issue with the white that's on the front facade because I think the metal against white vinyl is going to look odd. That, that's me. Well, is there some kind of mortar type skirt? it more represents what was previously approved? Um, we can maybe do like a, like we can do something and put stucco on it. But I, I didn't want to, that's basically, that was the old picture representing was some type of What about a stone, stucco. Ve stone veneer? Yeah, I don't think it was stucco, stucco. We can, we can cover no, that. No, I don't think any, it was stucco, I think it was poured. I think it was like, a, it look, made it, they made it look like it was rock. Or stone of some sort. Uh, whatever. I think we it's can, like a finished concrete. We technically, or it could be finished concrete. That's true. Yeah. It could be like a colorized concrete. Right. Yeah. Like Sean, as he said, I can do any type of finish. If 
the board feels that like a this, like a stone. So this said tile. Four, so this said four feet up to the floor. Planters to be tiled with below tile. So it's that tile. I think that it almost looks like wood. In fact, I was somewhere recently. So here, door bump out to be tiled with natural wood look tile. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's like those long, right? You know, tile. I believe that's very expensive. So I will. So that you know. that was here, and then this was going to be some kind of tile. But I think okay. we should, let's go back to. <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to see if I can find the material if it was set forth for the. You're focusing too much. <clears throat> you're focusing too much on the old picture. Let's <laughs> for this. I love this picture. <laughs> Now I'm just trying to see if there was a material specified. Honestly, yeah. it looks like this was essentially the same as this. So it was probably going to be a tile of some sort. And, and uh, you know, I don't know. Can you do a metal that would match the railing in some way? Like industrial kind of look? Like I said, but then I think it's going to be odd to have the white vinyl. That, so this, you had the black, you had the metal against a blackish or charcoal colored, you know what I'm saying? So, if you can open up back the yep. picture. So this one. So, I understand I need to do something on the skirt. We'll come up with something. We'll change the railing to metal. And we'll try to blend in a skirt or like you said with metal uh, finish or maybe with some uh, cultured stone. Maybe we'll implement some type of that in the picture, and we'll see if the if the white siding still makes sense. If not, we'll change that out. Okay. Question is, let's say if we change out the the white siding, what about the left side of the building? Do you think do we need to continue that on the left, fully on the left side of the building, or we can just change that front? It, my reaction is it might be the front. Mm -hmm. Only because you see you're leaving the white linen um, on the other wall. Too. On the other right, wall, right. 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 So you're not going to have, I don't think you can have the metal facing right up against it. Correct. You, you're not going to have that kind of a contrast. So right. I think it's really only that, from my perspective, okay. not everybody, from my perspective, that limited area. Makes, I think that's still not that... And then I would, if, if you're going to go to a darker color there, then I think you need to go to a darker color for that uh, canopy. I would try and go more like a metal canopy, the way it was originally. Where there? It was, there was... Um, right here? Yeah. Or, or really, do we need the canopy there? I will remove it and... Oh, the original canopy was here as opposed right. to here. It was recommended last time above the... Um, Above the handicapped door, we shall have a. Um, uh, it's not required by code, and I think it's. I don't see it helpful to the look of the building, though. If we can remove that. Well, why don't you? I don't why remember don't you when put, it put came something. Up. Why don't you put something together and see what it looks like mm -hmm. after you? Because I think you'll have a sense after you put the railing in. So I want to give it a try that way. My question to the board is, I believe there is another meeting this uh, month, the 16th. Yes. And again, I understand the board don't want to commit to anything, but if I can get something submitted to you by the 16th and the board looks at it and the board is happy with it, is there a possibility to get this approved that night? Again, I understand if the board will say, oh, there's too much questions again and back and forth, it wouldn't happen, but if you want to give me that chance. So what do we have on our A, we'd be getting it that night. And he, get it, he would have to have it to me Monday morning. So The meeting is Tuesday, so the 17th. You have three projects on there, J Squared. They're big projects. DJ Management and Palatine Sisters for the first time. You're bringing back a discussion on 20 Allison. Yeah. And, and I, I think I don't we're a little loaded up because we put all your projects on this meeting. I see. Um, so that you'd have one stop shopping. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> and I appreciate that. It's helpful. Yeah, and it's just, it's we've got DG. Is mm -hmm. it DG on? Uh, DG's there. Mm -hmm. And so that's a biggie. And he's then, squared. I don't remember what he's coming for. He's 
that's the right. That's the two lot two subdivision. Lot. Yeah, I just and don't it remember. was we were having a big discussion about the access ways. Right, and then uh, the new Palatine. And the Palatine system. is really big. Mm -hmm. So and that's brand new. And we're adding Allison Drive, mm -hmm. so I think it's going to be tough. I see. But you know what? Just Joel, try and get whatever you can get in. I'll try to get it in ASAP. Like well, like we said, for next Monday or Tuesday, and let's see. Okay. Yeah, and by Monday, if you have anything. And so I am in the office till 4:45. And just okay. on a spec sheet on something, we need to know what the materials are. I will are. add a detailed material. Yeah. List so for the, I think to to Sean's memo, he talks about what will the treads be? Are the treads going to remain the same? Um, if the treads are going to be wood, then they still have to be painted, even if you're putting metal that's, and... That's, that's proposed yeah. to be painted. Yeah, so... Sorry, if I can just bring up... Yep. Um, the, the lights that are proposed um, to be facing the parking lots, the, the ones that are not the sconces. Yeah, that's something to talk about. So, um, these were added. Right, and they are existing, like they are existing. They're the existing, right, right now, they added them. Right. Um, so, and they're so, not shielded. Right, they're not shielded, plus it doesn't look like, based on what was submitted, that they can get less than 4,000 Kelvin for right. the color temperature, so it's gonna appear a bit bright. Yeah, I'm definitely not okay with the lights. So it needs to be, a hump. what is the limit? Typically, I recommend not more than 3,500. Mm -hmm. Actually, it should be three. Three? Yeah, and we need a fixture that's downlit can add and shield. shielded. You can add shield to this one. The, that's basically the typically outside fixtures in that day, so the uh, LED fixtures that's being provided. So did you, sh did you send something in that showed how it could be shielded? Uh, I don't believe so, but I will check in that. We'll get you that. Okay. I'm not sure how it can be. They're pointed out at the, and that's like a huge pet peeve of mine, is everybody's adding these bright LEDs, 4,500 Kelvin that are shooting at your eyes when you're driving. Distracting. The other thing was there wasn't any elevations on the back side of the building. Yeah, so what are they doing on the back side? Because they finishing had like- Finishing white, the white siding, finishing up with the white siding. Why don't they do dark? What? Or it was white already? It's. It's dark already? What, no, what is it right now? I think there's... What did your picture show? This is brown. It's brown, maybe? Weatherproof. Oh, there's it, There's no there. siding. Yeah, it was just, I, I don't think they have yeah, any they sidings. Have so can they do a darker color instead of white? I don't think there is any issues in that. Yeah, because I think that'd be better. White's going to be a maintenance headache. You're going to see the mold on it because it's a shady area. Blend in more. Yeah, I think it'll blend in more. I would much prefer a brown. Is that okay? Yes? You know, you could come up with another rendition next week, and I'm not even <laughs> going to be sure I'm going to remember what we said here. What do you guys think, Pat, Jason? Well, I, the one thing I was going to say about the railing uh, that I was, I was trying to think of the material uh, that goes well is it's called Trex, Trex metal railing. There is know. tracks type of railing. Is that uh, that will be acceptable instead of uh, metal? Yeah. Well, it's it is metal. I mean, they have a, a Trex Trex metal railing. I know you're aluminum. thinking. Uh, mm -hmm. A Trex a Oh, you're talking from aluminum. There is like the Trex material that they're using now to build the decks instead of wood. Right. You you build it's not metal. Most of the Trex stuff is uh, materials are for decks but they have Trex railings mm -hmm. that they introduced a couple of years ago, which look like the first picture. Mm -hmm. that they're they're, they're like an aluminum or, it, yeah. or the composite like Trex deck? No, no, it's aluminum. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, anything about, so the, the side that you can't see that's facing over toward the other parking lot of the adjoining buildings to the north, um, I'm suggesting that we go with a dark color as opposed to white because I think it just, it, it, you won't see dirt, you won't see grime, you won't see mm -hmm. mold gr growing on it. As someone who has gray vinyl, I know you have to maintain it, otherwise it just looks dirty. So I think it'd be less of a maintenance issue, but mm 
you guys have any thoughts about that? Go with the darker one. The darker side. The dark one? Mm hmm Okay. So, so I think, did you have, that was it, right? That was it, yep. Ashley, did you have anything? So I think that gives you some um, guidance and submit them, you know, as soon as you can. And then we'll figure something out. We'll do so. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. So I'd like to table the minutes till our next meeting because <laughs> it's already 10. <laughs> and and um, we can take them up and we'll do as many as we can you know plus I think we might have two more members there I don't even know who was on those okay so let's take it up then Ward anything you want to add you're good we'll be sending you plans okay uh, anything anybody needs to raise I will not be at next Tuesday's meeting. I'm taking a long overdue vacation. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. Uh, Great. Ashley, Sean, you're good? All right. Thanks. So with that, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.